And mind you, which is so fucking crazy because we were just in the space yesterday, just yesterday. And when I asked you all the credibility of of a of a, a what you call it of the of the article about well, really the the Hornets don't really need cap flexibility because they have it. I was told it doesn't matter because these niggas just don't make shit up for the sake of making shit up. Now we're talking about somebody who's actually way more credible because he actually reports on the fucking team. Way more credible. Who's not only a nigga who consistently reports on the team, but is talking to a staff member. And because the niggas didn't say a specific name or said niggas' names in an odd order, now the whole fucking article or the whole quote, it's just, oh, that shit fishy. Nigga, you're not Batman, nigga. You're not Sherlock Holmes, nigga. You weren't there. He's talking to somebody who actually was there. I don't need your detective skills. You're not a detective, nigga. They're talking to a nigga. The man, the man who wrote it covers the team routinely and talks to somebody who was actually around them. That was the premise of the quote. Not so the nigga can make sure he fucking read down the roster just so perfectly and uniquely that he said everybody's name in alphabetical order or he knew how many fucking minutes everybody was going to receive. No, nigga, that wasn't the premise of the fucking quote. The premise of the quote was, we're going to run the offense this way and Westbrook is bucking back in training camp. That's the premise of the fucking quote. What's even nastier is that you have fucking, not, not uh, West, but the fucking other idiot who came in before quoting another fucking article. The nigga's quoting an article and Ramona Shelburne does a great job. But you're, we're, t we're claiming that we're going to have more credibility in Ramona Shelburne than somebody who's actually reporting on the team daily, who's actually talking to somebody who's in the... What are we talking about? Yo, can I talk? Uh, Lo, listen, I just want to say this one point, too. It's like, you, the final point, Lo, Lo hit everything. It's just like, you cannot tell me an entire article loses credibility <laughs> because motherfuckers want to cite Austin Reeves wasn't there instead of Rajon Rondo. Like, this is not spell so, check so, grammarly or some oh, bullshit. Got a question. Like, there's on, truth on, to on, it. And, like, I'm hold not on, buying any bullshit just because yeah, it doesn't fit your narrative, bro. Simple as that. Sub, bro. sub. It's not, it's not a narrative. I'm not, I'm not here to push a narrative. I, I oh, clearly yeah. said I'm not absolving Russ from any blame, Solid. any criticism. I preface my comments with that. And y'all know me. D Damo, Legend, um, B Souls, you, Sub, y'all know me. I'm not here to do that. What I said specifically, y'all heard it, was just <clears throat> the tenor of the the article. And I'm I do think that being honest to a T matters when you when you put certain things out because when you put something out like this and it frames right it make this is like if this is true, and I'm not saying that it's not true, I'm just saying that some of these things don't add up. But assuming it's true. This makes Russ look terrible. And if, so if we what? Hold on, hold on, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So hold on. what? Hold on. But who fought this guy? That was Russ's fault. Bro, bro, yo, yo. Let them I'm, sorry, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm uh, sorry. To Wes, I'm sorry I cut you off. But so what if it makes him look bad? If, if that's actually what happened, then it's just someone's account of what it actually happened. Who cares? And I want, before, before we let Wes go again, before you go, Wes, be clear. The article is not written from a direct... It's, it's written from the perspective of now that the season is over and I'm asking people about their interpretation of what happened in the season. That's the per perspective of the article. So, yes, there's a possibility when I'm recollecting a story that happened in the film room or in training camp that the premise of what I'm about to tell you is that from day one, Westbrook was already bucking the system. And through me explaining that to you, I might say a name or two that might not be, that might be out of bounds of what exactly might have been said in that moment. But the premise of my quote is, Westbrook from day one was disrespectful to Frank Vogel. That's the premise of the quote. Yo, can I talk after Wes? All right. Um, Damn, this just fuck my hand, so, huh?
Yeah, it is. <laughs> to to myself. Mom. It's like my penis. Okay. <laughs> All right, what's going on? All right, hey, so, yo. To the point that you made, look. To the point that you made, Lo, um, I was I was like getting to that before I got cut off. Um, I wasn't saying that the article making Russ look bad is a bad thing. Like I, I wasn't like saying that. What I was saying about the article making Russ look bad is if this is true, this is really damning. So and like to just be a hundred percent fair, I do think every I should be dotted and every T should be crossed. And when you put certain things out, you're responsible for what you put out. So to sit and act like we can change context based off of the time of the year, if I'm going to speak to training camp, I need to speak to training camp. I I can't speak to training camp from the perspective of the end of the fucking season. I need to speak to training camp and what was happening in training camp and put the context for training camp on full display. I can't do it. I'm going to speak to the to training camp, but use the context of the end of the season and after everything is blown up in everybody's faces. That's all I'm saying. I don't think that that's cool. And I don't Wes, think that that's I fair. guarantee you, and that's I it. guarantee you, if you ask Laker fans now, no one even fucking remembers Rajon Rondo was on this roster, bro. Like that's no, well, second. That, that, that's that's exactly Rajon why you want to like, And now you trying to throw Russell Westbrook, Westbrook under the bus, Chub. You know what the Shub, fuck was you, happening like, when you signed LeBron James, dog? This guy again, bro. Jeez, all right, y'all niggas getting out of control. The, and and to, to to Wes, I understand what you're saying, but the 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 point, the point it, from the article that I've that I'm I've read, and I've now read portions of this article, the whole article, at least um one and a half times and portions of it multiple times. The premise it sounded like, which normally happens, hey, you are a Stafford. Tell me the relationship of. What what it, what was your interpretation or the relationship of Westbrook and Frank Vogel throughout the year? The answer was, yeah, Westbrook never respected Frank Vogel from day one. That's what it sounds like to me. And then went on to expound on an example of Westbrook not respecting Frank Vogel. That's all I'm saying. Bro, there's multiple times where, again, there's people who watch the game and don't get all the game, all, don't get portions of the game incorrectly. The premise of the of that quote isn't to make sure everybody name is on point. The premise of it is again just to make it understood that here's an example of him disrespecting Frank Vogel and his authority over the team as the coach. That's all it was. If the nigga who's trying to recollect recollect something that happened six months ago, six, seven, eight, how many ever months ago, maybe not have put the names in the right order or didn't say exactly what Frank Vogel said word for word, that's not the point of the quote. That's not it. The point of the quote is to get to the point of what did Westbrook say after Frank Vogel highlighted to him, this is how we're going to run the team. And that's what he said. Because I would believe the Lakers staffer was probably more in shock that Westbrook was bucking back at Frank Vogel at training camp rather than Frank Vogel saying, oh, whoa, um, coach, we're probably going to put Rondo out there before we put Austin Reeves, so make sure you put Rondo's name first. Like, that's not, that's not what he was going to recollect on. That's what I'm saying. That's what everybody else is saying. If that is – if you cannot understand – that the article is just someone's recollection of what may occurred, and through the recollection, there may be some details that may be misinterpreted. But if you're just going to overlook the bigger theme of it, bro, that's a problem, bro. My question is, why do you care who the nigga's name, like my nigga? Bro, it's not bro. Relevant. All right, all right. So, yo, yeah. hold on, Wes. Hold on, Wes. Let me let me real say quick. this real quick. I'm I heard you all day. Listen, Wes. Yo, Cash, yo, look, bro, listen, you know you the guy, bro. We, we, we laugh, we crack jokes. This, Listen, this is not the time, my G. Look, bro, Wes was talking, Simple was talking. You can't just come up and tell niggas, hold on, niggas, spew whatever you about to spew, bro. Look, you got beef with niggas? Leave that shit somewhere else. It's not in here, bro. I'm telling you, this ain't the time. Only nigga that need to be getting packed up is that loser-ass nigga Westbrook. You got beef with anybody else? A different spaces for that, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Hold on, hold on, on, before before we go, here's a quote from someone who writes for the Athletic, Laker beat writer for the Athletic in October. West, this is what he said in October. 
Anthony Davis said Frank Vogel wanted him to bring the ball up the floor and push the pace more off of the rebound when appropriate. So literally, here's I'm, I'm about to pin it right here. Since this is what you fucking want. And I'm happy I'm in these fucking rooms with y'all because when I drop this video, I'm going to make sure I dot my eyes and I dot my eyes and cross my teeth since that's what the fuck y'all niggas want from me, but you don't expect that same shit from Westbrook. So I'm going to give it to you then, nigga. Here's somebody on October 6th saying the exact same fucking thing. And I'm going to pin it on the fucking, um, in, on the top of the shit, bro. Y'all niggas is fucking nasty. All right, so, um... I never, I never said anything about AD not um, like. The question is why against is AD. Why are the names relevant to you, bro? Bro, again, I've already stated why the names are relevant to me, um, and I don't have to reiterate that point. If you didn't understand it, you didn't hear it. I apologize. That's unfortunate. To Lowe's point, I understand exactly what you are, what you're saying, what Sub is saying, and what everybody else is saying. Who is you know who's who's taking that position? It's not that I don't understand that I can't comprehend what I am saying and what as a as a Russ fan and as someone who wants things to be fair to Russ as well as everyone else on this roster. I just think that when you write certain things at the end of a season from seven months back and you don't add full context and clarity to what the things were seven months ago it you you leave little loopholes and loopholes can be poke you know just poke a hole in this poke a hole in that poke a hole in that and that's all i'm doing um and, and Tyler, west okay so now it's at the top of the space so. no i just want to say i just want to want to say to everybody now it's at the top of the space so i mean damo can... had already posted that yeah okay so it so, was so there, now like, so now I, that's some that's a reporter quoting something that Anthony Davis said. Anthony Davis said that ge the general rule is that any other any player other than the white and DJ can bring the ball up. Can bring so the now ball did, up. Now, so now did Anthony Davis misinterpret that? Did he make sure he said the fucking names? Is he, he should he have said he probably should have said <laughs> other than DJ and Dwight because DJ started and not Dwight. So is and we're now going to question what Anthony Davis said. Man, that man Westbrook is uncoachable. Low, we talked about this bro, before. On, the man is uncoachable, dog. The reason they brought him to LA is because when everything fucks up, they're gonna blame him. He's the same There's player no he way. was. There's I don't no know. Way, no, no. no Where all these triple double no, no, fans? No, 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 no. See, nah, 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 bro. Yo, look, look, Cash. We be in a lot of spaces, bro. I, listen, people usually let you fly off the rails and do you. This ain't that time. You're not about to come in here and spew this dumb ass shit about Russ. Don't give me the they brought him in as a scapegoat for when they lose. That's bullshit. They brought him in because they over-evaluated trying to have a big three. They mismanaged the roster. That's fine. But they did not say, man, if we need a third, who's a good guy for if shit goes wrong? Everyone believe it's his fault. That's not what the fuck they thought. They thought they would get a version of Westbrook that Westbrook told him, like I said, yeah, a lot of you niggas might not be here at the beginning. We all lie on job interviews. When them three niggas went on that dinner meeting before Russ got there, when them three niggas went on that dinner meeting, lies were told. And I'm telling you right now, Russell Westbrook lied to get the job because this job declined a championship. The one thing on his resume he don't got. So that nigga lied to get the job. We all lied to get jobs. Nigga, we got jobs right. Nick, I bet a lot of you niggas right now got a job you lied to get. I guarantee you lied to get that job at that interview. They ask you about them kids. You care about kids? Oh, I love kids. You don't fucking like kids. You hate kids. How you feel about old ladies? Man, I love old ladies. Nigga, you hate old ladies. But you like to get the job, right? That's what Russ did. Russ sat down and said, I'll be this, I'll be that. But when training camp hit, what are we hearing now? Anyone can get the ball off the board and bring it up. Nah, I'm the point guard. That sounds like Russ. When Russ in 2016 had the team to himself, what was his game style? What was it predicated on? Him running a break off of getting rebounds. That is literally Russ's game. It sounds 100% believable. It's one thing if they're saying things that don't make sense. But what is being said that doesn't make sense? The names listed. All, all the arguments I'm hearing is niggas saying, bro, why did they say these names and not this name? One nigga says Kendrick Nunn. The other nigga bringing up Rondo. I'm hearing all these, all these excuses on why this can't be true because of names, niggas name. But does the intent of what the fucking article is saying. 
Does that not sound like Russ? Russ is your guy. Does that not sound like Russ? Does Russ not get the board, push the break, use his athleticism on the break to either score or get into an open man, use his playmaking? Is that not Russ? So, that's yo, exactly yo, Russ. Yo, that's exactly who yo, he is, yo, yo, and that's exactly why yo, they yo, got him. Yo, I don't know what you don't understand. Like that nigga. Hey, listen, dude. Why would Russ, they get a nigga that would sabotage this? Bro, if you watch every single sense. post game interview from this man, and you you saw this article this morning, how the <laughs> fuck is it not fully believable, bro? Like the attitude, <laughs> man, the man, it is man, believable. Man, it is man, believable. Man, that was him before he got to LA, and LeBron bro. knew this too. So why the LeBron fuck are knew this. Palinka knew this bro. shit, man. What are you hey, talking hey, about, hey, dog? Hey, hey, you hey, act hey, like hey, Westbrook was gonna change hey, his hey, game hey, when he got to LA. He's the exact same player, bro. He's all. We've gone to a point. We've gone to a point where now we're making excuses for him. Like the, the line is so. I was about to say, how does fight? How does how is Chef fighting the the mute? What the <laughs> fuck is going on? Yo, all right, we got goddamn, bro. We got to go in fucking order now. Jesus Christ. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Yeah, just raise your fucking hand, bro. Fuck. We'll go. We'll go simple. Uh, shoves. I'll just. I'll. I'll just say the niggas that keep your hands up though. Like don't fucking put them down. Goddamn. Simple first, and it was a going order. Man, I, I, I really don't want to argue about some of this shit because you know these Russ fans go crazy. But, like, I just came over here for uh, people that say he didn't get the ball enough and sat in the corner and all that type of shit, um, which was untrue. I mean, you can go on NBA.com. The nigga was – anything that had to do with usage or touches, the nigga was first or second in the league is in. That's all I really had to say. He was second in touches and – on the Lakers, first in time of possession, first in time of every second per touch. Like, the nigga got the ball. He was just sucking. Simple as that. Shubs. I just, I just want to say, like, the proof is in the pudding, bro. If you've been following every fucking postgame interview, forget basketball for a second, and his demeanor, his frustration, um, like, I'm not even talking about being nice to the media because fuck that. You don't got to be nice to the media. It's just about the things he was spewing out in defeat. Like, how could anyone not put two and two together and understand that this article is very much leaning towards true? But motherfuckers want to make excuses because that's all we've been doing for him all season long. And now this time it's reached such a new low that we're talking about technicalities. We're talking about like substitute names. Like what the fuck? Like just to defend this man, which is a weak fucking argument. If you're going that low to like oh, cite something that's suspicious and shit that, that like that's a new low and like like simply put like you lost bro like westbrook is doing this to himself this shit is just getting started just getting fucking started by the way and we're, we haven't even hit the playoffs yet and there's gonna be more shit more what leads the this out? is just the beginning so i, I just want to say that this is pathetic it's super sad this is happening to my team that. i just want to be fucking over i cannot wait till it's over and we're going to start fresh, and our team's going to be better because of it. I can't take it no more. I can't take you fa stands anymore. I need you off my fucking franchise. I need the stands gone because you have caused the biggest headache of the entire season. I don't even care we won 31 games. The fact that these stands on this app just continue to spew out excuses for his play, his demeanor, for everything, and use the dumbest fucking basis for their arguments, like... I, I feel bad for your basketball acumen. I hope you go fucking ruin some other franchise. Have fun in Indiana. Mm. Uh, to simple, simple asking a question: What article is it? <laughs> the, 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 no, the I said Russ when did it come out? Like the, the oh, it came out today. These are, Earlier these are all, today, all simple came out today. Today, and I think there might have been one of them. Did the Ramona one come out today or yesterday? So hold, what, Ramona today. released today. From How do you expect today to remember everybody? He's out here looking for Ramona <laughs> Shell, bro, 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 bro. I look, look. The name thing is is just a point. It's a point against the article. It's a point against the article. And Shub, he, he's in here talking real, good. real, real wreck, like real reckless. But Shub knows that I I slid like I commented under the post, and we had a little a little interaction. And it's understood that. Nah, you're cool, Wes. This, that, it's all good. Huh? You're good. Yeah, you're good, Wes. It's understood that if if this is true. I understand how bad this looks for Russ. I'm just poking little holes where I can poke holes. We understand that. I'm not saying the entire article is bogus because I read the article and I don't think the entire article is bogus. I do think that it is very possible that Russ did not want, want certain people to be, be able to bring the ball up the court. To sit and say, though, that 
no one other than me could bring the ball up the court. To say that he said that, I don't believe that. That's me personally, and that's fine. Now, and and that's just that's just where I'm gonna stand. But what like, what, what this isn't what, me off of what basis him. though? Well, off of what basis? Be, you want to be the primary nigga to bring the ball up the court? But what's off, off, off of what basis do you, you saying? Are you saying that you don't think yeah, that primary, he said that? Not only. Go ahead, Lo. But what what basis do you think that he said that? What basis are you saying it off of? I think that when it because <laughs> to Ad's point, anyone other than the white. And DJ. So if Kent Bazemore is in the game, Kent Bazemore can get get a board and push push the pace. Yeah, because that's and, what the coach said. Listen, nigga. you always want to fucking talk and always want to cut off. That's the Let thing that be talking forever on it, but all right. bro, I actually I I keep getting cut off, and that's why yeah, I'm trying to take prolonged. Let but anywho, land. anywho, when it comes to certain players like Bazemore, just to point him out. For him to be, for for a coach to say, I'm comfortable, I would rather Baysmore get it just to push the pace. And I, I get that philosophy. But for Russ to say, yeah, I'm going to push back against that, I, I totally stand with Russ. I do not believe that Russ will push back against LeBron James getting the board and pushing the ball up the court. I don't believe that Russ would push back against that. Wes, Wes, bro, you're, you're missing and I, and point, I understand though. what you're saying, but no, just, I'm know, not missing the point. I'm you I'm, are, you I'm are, because it's more. not, it's, it's not, it's not about, it's not necessarily about specifically LeBron James. It's pushing back. If the coach says, hey, this is how we're running the philosophy, and then he for what, anyone. Might, what, uh, For and, anyone and, and to Anthony, bring the ball up off court. of yes, off, yeah. off of Anthony Davis's interpretation is, hey, that outside of DJ and Dwight, everybody can can push the pace. If that's what it's going to be, bro, that's what it's going to be, bro. That's and what it's going to be. And I don't think and, and, that and, and as wrong a, to push back against. Him. No, he's that's dead wrong. Saying. And let me let me yeah. let me tell you why. Let me tell you why he's wrong because we had this conversation two three weeks ago. Because that nigga is not in any capacity. To tell somebody with a fucking championship what to do. That nigga's in no capacity. That nigga's on the team to make adjustments and sacrifices. We keep going with this back and forth thing about how teams need to, or players need to confine to who Westbrook is. No, they don't. And what's crazy is Westbrook inevitably ended up getting more of what he wanted anyway. And it didn't work out for the Lakers regardless. So, no. If you think that a nigga is lawless, he's above the coaching, especially somebody who just can't, who's a fucking, who has been losing in the playoffs for the past how many ever years, can't make a fucking conference finals into 2016. If you think that nigga is above a championship caliber coach, that nigga, you're, you're literally above a championship caliber coach catch yeah man listen i agree with y'all everything y'all saying i think he's very uncoachable i've been seeing that a long time ago that's why that's why kd left him man that's why hard don't want to play with him that's why chris paul don't want to play with him but if y'all just realizing this now in la and now y'all want to blame in what, whatever happened to L.A., then y'all got to be the crazy motherfuckers. You was the nigga on here low saying that this shit won't fit. The T-shirt too small. It just won't fit. You fucking right. What the fuck is different now? Now y'all just want to grind him because up, dog. Because he agreed to change his game? But we've he, been he, grinding he ain't him up in his game and this, this, this part of his we, career. Like, He's not changing his we game. Been, he's a bad move time play. out, time out, time out. Bad guy. We uh, Listen, I know you met me as recently, but let me go ahead and reintroduce myself. I've been grinding him up all year. It's Damn. documented on the tube. I got paid to do this, okay? <laughs> hey, I'm not just saying this now, my God. But I No, no, you good, you good. But what I'm saying listen, is, there's, there, for me, there's no point of grinding Russell Westbrook up this whole year. This was expected to happen. Nothing else was going to happen but this if you know a little about basketball and Russell Westbrook. This shit wasn't going to fit. Right? So, who the fuck is to blame? Start talking about the GM. Man. The, the, the motherfucker who got him here. Every time when LeBron... Hold on, don't mind her. Every time LeBron win, y'all gonna give him the credit. Every time he lose, it's somebody...
And this is why you get muted. And all you NWO niggas, y'all can blow me up if you want to. I highly don't give a fuck. We're not about to do this. You niggas are not about to absolve blame from Westbrook for playing bad. I get the situation was not ideal for him. I get the fucking fit was not 100% perfect. But that's on him as a 32-year-old man coming out of his prime, declining physically to change his game. Defer to niggas who have won. Defer to niggas who are better and greater than you. That's your obligation as the point guard that you want to be. That's your obligation as a basketball player competing for a championship. Every role he's had in his career up to this point led to first, second round exit. It has not led to a championship. So if we're talking about winning, you might need to change your fucking train of thought. Domo, how he lied, man. How he lied on the application. We saw him his whole career, Domo. Bro, the shit sound cute. It sounds like a whole game, lot of bro. fluff to me, if you ask me, dog. Y'all don't know what y'all like talking about tonight. Like Usually y'all know what y'all talking about, but tonight y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Listen. And it's crazy because, I, again, I told niggas I'm not battling for a mic. So, again, NWO, suck my nuts, nigga. Y'all can be mad if you want to. I'm telling you now, my G, I, it is not fluff. It's not. I've heard a lot of fluff come out of a lot of niggas' mouths. This ain't fluff, bro. Oh, yeah, it's bluff. It's marshmallow. Let me bluff. tell you, LeBron James wins. He gets all the credit. LeBron James loses. Let's start blaming everybody <laughs> else. Big three heat. Big three gets credit. Chris Rock. Chris. I said Chris Rock. Jesus. Chris Bosh. Chris Bosh's Bosch, stock rises. The respect for Chris Bosh rises. Mike Miller gets a ton of credit. Shane Battier, a ton of credit. Everyone Bron played with got credit. Dwayne Wade, thir- top three shooting guard of all time. Everyone gets their credit. No one gave LeBron all the credit for his rings in Miami. In 2016, niggas are still putting Kyrie over Dame, Kyrie over a lot of niggas for hitting the shot to win the fucking game. Niggas do that. Kyrie went for 40 with LeBron James to come back in 3-1. Kyrie did his thing in the playoffs. Niggas are harping on him, and then you leave. It's cool. Like I said, bro, y'all make y'all own space. If y'all want to sit here and fucking yell dumb shit at each other and over each other, do that. That's fine. You're not doing it with me, bro. You're not. I started this yelling shit. I started this idiotic rage of yelling at me. I do this, bro. You're not about to do this to me, bro. You're not. I'm, you get that off with that dumb motherfucker Joy. You get that off with that dumbass nigga Rayvon. You get that off with all them other niggas. You're not getting it off with me, bro. And I'm saying names. Niggas want to throw subtweets. Bitch, I throw names. Fuck is you talking about? Fuck all you rest brick fans, bro. You niggas are bums. You niggas are losers just like him. If you're following K- a loser, that might make you a loser. Motherfucker, what are you talking about? KT. We're going to go to KT because I, I, I got trying some to talk valid points. I got some valid points. Yo, um, <clears throat> yo, before I get started, all I got to say to Shubs is you need to stop worrying about Westbrook and you need to worry about why you keep buying bitches drinks in the fucking club. Bro, I ain't going to lie. Bro, bro, you what are we talking about, for bro? Shubs, bro. Get the fuck on, bro. What the you fuck? niggas is you know, niggas, niggas really got a good point talking about anything but basketball. Bro. <laughs> you niggas is bringing up personal. Do y- yo, Shubs, what do you do to these niggas, bro? Why do so many niggas hate you? Oh, you're muted. That nigga yo, told so me, bro. Wet, crazy. Westbrook, no way. It's just upsetting, why the fuck bro. Listening to three fat it's ass mad, bro. When the fuck? They just is mad. mad. It's crazy. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? You sat, you literally sat here, had niggas DM me and, and mention me so you could talk. And the first thing you want to say is, I'm listening to three fan niggas. Uh, bro, and matter of fact, niggas, everybody stop. And the niggas stop. literally in here listening to us. You're fucking fact, dumb. Wait, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> that no, makes, no, that means you're dumb by your own admission, you dumb fuck. Wait, wait, low, stop, it, stop. Let KT go, bro. Let KT go. Because he's been waiting for a while. Let him go. Go ahead, bro. You're unmuted. Go ahead. Yo, listen, I got a question for the 1,400 people in here. It's Friday afternoon, right? Psych a lie. Shut the fuck up. That's the... That's the... That's, bro, that's why I love me so much, because I really don't give a fuck. I'm childish. I am still childish. Like, bro, you waited so long to say this dumbass joke or this dumbass point you got, bro. My fault, bro. My fault. I'm being childish. I'm being a child. Go ahead. You see this fat ass in the You see how you're not able to talk now? Make your own space <laughs> to say what you want to say. It's crazy. It, it's crazy how that works. You're waiting. To, you've been waiting to talk. You've literally planned this out in your head. Bro, I'm about to ask these 1,400 people this crazy joke. Bro. I'm, about to, I'm about to blow up on this one. Yo, listen, you're mad. Crazy. Now you're, you're, now you're off the stage. You see how that works? Now keep waiting to talk, nigga. You know what's so Sad crazy? Life. You know what I found weird? 
in all in all seriousness, <laughs> niggas like that who love to talk always have protected tweets. Y'all niggas is weird. How you gonna talk crazy and they have protected tweets? Y'all niggas is weird, bro. But but let let um Eli go ahead, bro, because you done been bounced on off this stage like eight times. Go ahead, bro. Face on. Facts, facts, facts. Listen, listen, listen. Like I understand where like Russ stands stand on this, and I understand how you're perceiving this because there is a large possibility, right? With the way that the season went, the way that like the way that stuff is reported around this team in general, that some of the stuff at the very least is exaggerated. But we can use fucking context clues to like <laughs> we can use context clues to conclude that there is some validity to you know Russ not having the best relationship with Frank Vogel, and there is some of the validity to him not having the best relationship with the franchise in general. You can come to a logical conclusion. That wow, this may be exaggerated. This may not be exactly true, and and like the the details around this may not be like the most complete. There, is, the 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 core issue, the core problem that this person is trying to illustrate does exist or or did exist, and, and we'll never know. But like at some point, you got to use your brain power to come to that conclusion, my nigga. Like like you at the you have to meet niggas at the middle ground. Cause like there's there's no there's no evidence that this nigga is just absolved from any co- conflict between the coaching staff. This shit has been going on the entire season, and to pretend like it hasn't is like just just flat out ignorance and like fucking dumb fandom. Like I don't know. There, some of these reports are fucking crazy. Like like them sending the nigga to an eye and hand doctor because he wasn't making layups is kind of crazy. Like. Some of this shit is very hard to believe, but I, I yeah just, the dunks I the dunks when he's I can't 65%. Possibly, I, crazy part about it, I can't possibly doubt it. I dead ass can't doubt it. Like the Lakers are a weird ass franchise, and this is a weird ass situation. But they're at the they're at the very least there is some validity to whatever's going on. Facts, facts, facts. Um, can we go to uh, I want to say Juan? <laughs> the press, yeah, yeah, Yo. yeah. yeah, yeah. I just want to say, um, to that nigga that was spewing that bullshit earlier about making excuses about Russ, but that nigga's a fucking idiot. Like, you're fucking retarded. Just like that nigga. Um, cause you dumb as fuck, bro. Like, you, like, come on, bro. Like, how are you still defending that nigga, bro? He's fucking garbage. Like, like, come on, bro. Like, who, who are you talking to? I'm talking to the, the West nigga, whatever his name is. Like, I don't even know that nigga name. Wes, you were right. Hello, how are you? Yeah, like, you fucking stupid, my nigga. Like that ass. I respect like, it. I respect it. Yeah, that's why you stupid. Cause you respect stupid shit like that. Like you just let a nigga. What's going on? What do you have? Do you have to call me? Yeah, what's going on, man? Like, what come on, fuck? y'all. Bro, this nigga's a grown man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, Jesus Christ. All right, yo, we gotta go. We gotta. Um, <laughs> right, are you gonna make a basketball point, Juan? <laughs> yeah. What are you? Was there? Was there a basketball point in anything you gotta say? No, nah, they need to get rest the fuck up on out of that. Hmm. All right, All right great um, pick, bro. Key, key goaded. Hey, yo, man. Fucking hey, look, I'm going to just take this time to just talk about some basketball shit real quick. Fuck that article. Fuck all that shit. Look, that, that this this is, and this is just me, right? Y'all can disagree. I don't give a fuck. But look, though, the fact that everybody want to blame this whole season on Russ is low-key fucked up because, no, because on, the, on the simple fact that the nigga came in to be him. Now, granted, he's supposed to get better as a player. He's supposed to get better as a shooter, all that shit, yeah, completely. But as a coach, and this is just me. I don't know if y'all watch the games like I do, but noticing that a coach like Frank fucking Vogel, like since game one, you let a nigga like Kent Bazemore start for five minutes. The first five minutes, that nigga hoop. The rest of the 44 minutes that nigga play, he sucked. You make no adjustments. This entire season, this nigga made 39 lineups. Why does he why do you have more than 39? Why do you have more than 20 lineups? In injuries and inconsistent play. Cool, bro. cool, like, cool. Injuries and all that. Right, right. But if we want, right. if you want to be, if you want to be honest, right? Injuries change lineup changes only change throughout the season, maybe like 10 to 15 times during the uh, depending on who's injured. And and what? you know COVID and everyone else, COVID and everything else. But like this nigga changed the lineup thirty nine times. You have more, you have more lineup changes than wins. Then on top of that, you make everybody else look even worse. Like 
there is not there is no chance in hell that you lose to a Washington Wizards team in the last five minutes of a game and you don't let Dwight Howard play. You don't let Dwight Howard play. Chris Stops whooped they ass in that last five minutes. Everybody know they blew a 20, they blew a 21 lead. Yeah. But you don't bring in the one big that you have left. You got one big left. While the Wizards ran the same action. While the Wizards ran the split. same pick and roll. How you his, how you his, at, hold on, hold on, gang. Hold on, gang. Hold on, gang. Because I ain't How you just, flipping the narrative like that? Hold on. I'm not flipping this the narrative. This is the what entire I'm reason. Say, let all finish, I'm saying is that that should not be the entire yes. reason. I'm saying Russ deserves some blame. But that's not the entire reason. You got to blame. You got to put some of this on Frank. What does the title say? What does the title say? Russ is the reason. No, but he's Where not. Where the fuck is, is what right? I'm saying. He's not the reason. Right, right. I'm, he's a I'm, part. I'm with you. He's a part of it. He's not the reason. He's one Frank of Vogel. the reasons. Hold on, gang. Hold on. That's bro. not what the title look, 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 says. Hold on. Eli. I'll let y'all niggas Read. talk. Oh, I'll let y'all niggas talk for a whole hour, my nigga. I'll let y'all yeah, niggas let him, let him, let him land. Let him Real shit. Hold on. I'll let y'all niggas talk for a whole hour. Once I'm finished, then y'all can talk, bro. I just, I, I just want to get my piece out, bro. For real. Just all I'm saying is, is that, bro, y'all cannot just put the whole tired season on Russ, bro. Y'all can't. And then on top of that, y'all got niggas in the front office like Linda fucking Rambis take over the fucking coaching scheme. Why? Why, bro? Linda Rambis, I give you Kurt. But Linda Rambis, bro, come on, gang. Everybody got a piece. Everybody got a piece to hold, bro. My mama, my mama says this thing. Hold your shit, bro. And smell it. Like my nigga, hold that shit. Everybody got to hold that shit, never bro. Said that. Frank Vogel got to hold it. Linda, the Rambuses got to hold it. Russ got to hold it. Brian got to hold it. But this entire season is not on Russ. I don't give a fuck what nobody say, bro. I understand that he played a poor season, but this is not on Russ. As a as a coach like Frank Vogel, bro, and you know you got a nigga like Russell Westbrook, dude. You got a nigga like Russell Westbrook ain't on your team. You got to figure out a way to make him better. Play to his strengths. Not his weaknesses. You mean to tell me that a pick you put a pick and roll player in the corner and you expect for him to do bro, what? He was second on the, the team third with touches, bro. He, he was, was never in the corner. No, 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 no. That's not my point. That's not my he's point. That's not my point. Yes, he's the third. Touches, bro. Yo, so he yo. Was not yes, the he's corner, the third bro. option. But if you run a pick and roll for AD, is AD not the first option? You run it. You run in the office through what? AD. He's the first option. So yeah, what? pick and roll. Pass it to AD bro, and see what happens. The second option, all nigga, season, pick and roll is either play or make a play. No, is he dying? Is, he is, he y'all ain't listening, gang. Playing, y'all ain't listening. My point is, I'm not saying Russell Westbrook is the first option. I know he's not, but you don't put a non-shooter that wants point pick and roll all day and send him in the corner, bro. He you was don't second do that. in the team. So wait, so, so I want to, I want to, I want to right? ask a question. I want to, because you're just somebody who Everybody also believes. You you're somebody who also believes like, in the, in that. Um, quite frankly, just the myth that Westbrook spent um a good portion off ball. No, 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 I, no, 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 no. I'm not whoa, saying that. I'm whoa, not whoa, even. Whoa, look, whoa, look, look. Because look, look, I don't even. I don't want this to sound like I'm like like I'm a Russ fan. Because I'm not. I love Russ, but I'm not a Russ fan. I'm just talking about from a basketball perspective, bro. No, know your personnel. My point is that's my point. Know so your where personnel. Would Russ, where would where would Russ shoot? Stand? How the fuck you lead the league in turnovers? No, I'm, 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 I'm asking you where, where would you put Russ when he's off ball? You, you use him like uh, where he's off ball in the darker spot, in the slasher spot, not bro, in the look corner. At the tweet okay, okay, top, okay. Bro. All right, all right, all right. If you, if you put, if Can you put, look at the tweet up top for me, please. Bro, if you we understand. Look at that, bro. No, 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 no. no. We're, we're, we're about to. Team in touch. Bro, bro, I'm not. We understand. I Hello, I did, bro, 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 bro. Let Low get off his point. Let that. Low communicate what he's saying. So, because, yeah, because, I, because look, I'm not denying none of what he did. Yes, he turned the ball over a lot of times, bro. I understand all that. I'm not saying that at all. He did. He did. You know what he did as far as a player as, as a fuck up. Yes, he fucked it up. What I'm saying is, is that at least make it comfortable for him to figure out. Like, all right. Damn, what do I need to do? Not just force the nigga in the fucking corner. No, he's not a the shooter. He can't okay, so all right, so let me, let me, bro, let me. Can you look at the tweet up top? Yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me land. Let me land. Let me land. I'm, I'm going to. Okay, so let's run through the, run through this hypothetical, especially with Anthony Davis. If AD says that he wants, um, a big on the floor, so that means Dwight or DJ is also on the floor with AD. Why is Rustbrook going to be in a dunker spot? Because the only reason why he's in the darker spot is because you already running through AD and Brian anyway. 
You already I don't want. Listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. But listen to what I'm saying. Right, he can't. Man, right, he can't shoot. He can't shoot. And as a coach, you should know that. You don't listen put to a what I am saying. You're not, you're not listening. Key, listen, keep, listen, keep going. Listen. listen to low. Listen to low real quick. Listen to what I'm saying. And everybody, please chill. Because we're gonna run down this dynamic. Fast. If if a big is on the court, because that's what Anthony Davis is also requesting, is that he plays a power forward, and that's why Dwight and um, DJ were getting that many minutes early on in the season, right? Yeah. DJ and Dwight have to be in a dunker spot. They have right. to be in a dunker spot. Right, right. They so, have to be in a dunker spot. But what if but if we're saying if because let's just say for the sake of argument, and they're starting, right? They're starting. Dwight is starting. Now let's let's not let's remember Dwight. Damn near did not play, I'm going to say, like, 55 60% of the games, okay? But let's just say, okay, it's Russ, A.D., Dwight, Brian, and Malik Monk. Where do you put Russell Westbrook? You going to keep putting him in the question corner or you going to make him run? You. That's you know the question I'm, I'm asking you. Uh, yeah, but I'm saying, I'm saying, this. my point is, you going to keep putting him in the corner or are you going to make him run pick and roll? Bro, he so, can't so, be wait, so, in so, every so our plan, 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 plan. No, I'm not saying. No, all right, okay. I'm no, no, not no, no, saying no. involve him. I'm not saying involve him. I'm saying don't play to his weaknesses. His okay, weaknesses. Like, he I'm can't do. Oh, no, if I get cut off again, I'm cutting the nigga. I'm cutting. I'm, I'm putting people in the, in the gulag. Because the reason why I'm 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 stepping down this lot line of logic. Because I need people to understand. Because in the beginning of the season, I did this already. I made a whole video about why they were suffering. So then you said, get them involved, pick and roll. Okay. If he gets in pick and roll situation to key, because the pick and roll numbers for Westbrook were horrible. They were horrible. The reason why they were horrible is because if he gets the ball, pick and roll, the player who's defending him goes under the screen and sags off because they know they're anticipating the shot from him. I mean, Absolutely. they're anticipating the drive. Absolutely. Okay. So then it forces him into a mid-range shot, which he was missing at a ridiculously, like at an abnormal rate, he was missing them. Okay. So, so then the question needs to be, if, he, if mm -hmm. he can't run pick and roll fluently and he can't be in a dunker spot because you're starting, a you have lineups featuring another big, what, what do you do with Westbrook? I'm I'm saying you can't put him in the corner. If anything, if that's the case, then I'm not suffer. saying can't. I'm asking you. I'm asking. Where no, I'm, I'm saying no, no, no. I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you a question. I'm I'm saying then if that's the case, sub him. But if okay, then let's do this. <laughs> okay, what? we, we agree. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I, like I, I said, sell, like I said, I'm not defending Russ. Hold on, bro. I'm not defending Russ up here, nigga. If y'all listen to me, I'm not defending Russ. I'm just saying, make the shit make sense. Y'all saying, oh, Russ out there playing like shit. All right, Frank, sub his ass. He wasn't doing it. My point is the nigga wasn't making adjustments. Now, back to my original point, though, and I'm and I'm answering Lowe's question. Let's or or I'm talking to Lowe with this. You they was running some bullshit ass, weak ass triangle offense where either either Brian coming down or Russ coming down, and some and there's two niggas in the uh in the uh in the uh the elbows. You throw it to either Brian or AD, and then you wait for a cross screen to come. Where is where is Russell Westbrook after that cross screen comes? He's in the in, he's in on the left side of the wing or in the corner. Then you give the ball to Russ because nothing else is open. Then you force him. Then you force him in a bad spot. Shit, what I'm gonna do? Uh, oh, I'm gonna shoot this bitch off the backboard. Like, no, that's his weakness. Apparently, he can't shoot from that spot. Put him to where he's comfortable at. That's all I'm saying. And and I was, are are you fucking decides, kidding me? Where yeah, yeah, he's on the floor bad, decides what shots he decides to take. What the fuck? But I, but I'm that, in, the bro. Corner, I mean, in the corner, he yeah. shot threes. That's the best. Yeah. Three points. That was literally the best place that he was like. Tell most me what coach is going to force him to take bankers from mid range if he can't fucking hit him. him. Hey, my nigga. I didn't say force him to do anything, bro. All I'm saying is as a player, because I hoop, right? As a player, sometimes when you get into, put in a serious situation, you playing on a shot clock, and you got eight seconds left on the on the on the clock, bro. You got eight seconds. Nothing's going. Let's just say for this. Let's just say. Let's just put it in a hypothetical like this. Russ got that bitch off that uh off the off the offense they run. They got it. He has eight seconds on the clock, bro. He has two options: either pass it, which might end up getting turned over, or he shoots a dumbass shot. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. As a point guard. 
with eight seconds left, does he not have the ability to call himself a screen with eight seconds left to get him a better quality? I'm not since he's, since that he's successful at all. so yes, much in the pick and roll. Does but he not, not have the fucking bro, 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 But what bro, you're telling bro, me, let's, let's, he needs his coach's fucking approval to call a fucking No, that's not what I said, card. gang. That's Dumbass not what I said, kid. gang. That's not what I said. <laughs> you still ain't listening. My, what I'm saying is, as a coach, you let these motherfuckers run the same play in five possessions straight, and you don't change nothing? Well, I All mean, you want to do is just be let's... like, oh, oh, Russ got it. Oh, oh, he, th- oh, he shot up another bad shot. Oh, another turnover. Change the offense, but there, but what we're, I think, something. I think, I think what we're, I think what everybody is saying is that there was never an offense to be ran that would best that would best benefit everybody, where would be optimal for Westbrook because the most optimal offense for Westbrook with him would be him having the ball at the top of the key, spamming pick and rolls, and that was not the best offense for the Lakers. Right, right. That pushing was, right. no, 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 absolutely, that wasn't the best transition. offense. But I'm saying if you actually look at the offense, that was all they were technically running anyway. No, I I can't say that either because especially when AD and LeBron were there, they were running a lot of, um, um, a lot uh, of what, a lot of a lot of, po- a lot of post up, no, a lot of post ups on the wing. Right, they were running but, a lot but, of, but, but, a lot but, of elbow but it's, to, but it's still right. If that, but if that ain't there, it's still what a pick and roll for one of them two motherfuckers, right? But it, but, but what I'm saying is that it's much better. You're much in a much better situation if you're running a pick and roll with LeBron handing the ball than Russell Westbrook handing the ball. Even if Westbrook mm-hmm. is in the corner, just optimally speaking, it actually works much better for the team because as the as a ball handler in LeBron, he's a much better ball handler, shooter, scorer in, in many ways. And the roller who's rolling to the basket becomes a much bigger target for him because the defense has to interact with LeBron with the pick and roll. Noticeably different than they have to interact with Westbrook. Like literally, it would yeah. not have made any sense. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm look. What I'm saying is, y'all, is the even with all of us even knowing that you don't make a change, you have to make a change as a coach. That, but what we're saying is that's the best. That is the best change to put no. Westbrook in the. No, I'm listen. Listen to put Westbrook in the corner where he's actually being the been the most efficient on, on out on as a perimeter shooter in the in the left corner was his best shot all season long. That's actually the best situation for Westbrook. The short, the short, a shorter three point shot for Westbrook when he's off ball is the best way. Not only because he can, he's shooting uh, okay in that area, but also he's cutting so he can cut. He gives him a clear line to cut to the basket. Okay, but any right. other place off ball was just horrible, and he can't okay. be in a dunker spot if you're playing another big man on right. the court with him. Okay, right, absolutely. That's if both of them two were on the on the court together. They which weren't they on the have been. which they the, shouldn't have been right, 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 and which they shouldn't have been either. Because look, let's not act like Frank Vogel had all the power to put AD at the center, and he still didn't change that. <laughs> but listen, but listen to what you're saying. The, the point I'm making is, and it's fine that Frank Vogel could have <laughs> interacted with different lineups, which you, you you criticized him for running several different lineups before. But now all of a sudden you're telling him he should have done even more lineups for putting. No, no, no. I'm not even talking about lineups. I'm talking about. No, no, no. I can't because I can't really say nothing about lineups. Lineups is different than actually making adjustments as far as the what you run, what you run. I'm talking about what you run. So like offense, you run the same five plays and everybody know what's going on. Like, okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, right? They run the same little stupid ass triangle offense and then it works the first time it works. One time, the next five times, Frank says, hey, run that same play. Run that same play. The second time, that bitch don't work. The third time, that bitch don't work. The fourth time, that bitch don't work. The fifth time, that bitch. And then literally the entire game is just the same dry-ass triangle offense. But, 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 but I think what we're, we're all saying is that there's literally no proof that anything would have worked, bro. Literally, you didn't literally- try it. You didn't I know they, they did try. They ran if they man they ran multiple sets of pick and roll with Rush, but with Rush handing the ball. They ran multiple sets with him on the on the perimeter, not in the corner, while he had a clear cutting lane. Because I visibly, I vividly remember them running those sets where LeBron was in the post and he was able to find Le- um, Westbrook cutting. They ran actually. Anthony Davis and, spent more time and, at the five than he did at the four. And so low, they and ran low, him and low. at the five as well. So they tried multiple. They tried LeBron at the five. They tried Melo at the four and the five. They tried multiple Which things. Is stupid. So, but okay. But but okay. But you can't say that they didn't try things when they actually did. You start. 
started by saying that they tried all these different lineups just for you to then say that they no. didn't try enough. But they no, actually no, 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 no. Did. I said I just think I, it's no, hilarious. No, no. I, said, I just think it's no, hilarious that any sets. other point guard. Hey, I didn't let me say the this. lineups. I said the sets. I'm they did. They're trying this. different sets. They can't run the same set with Le- LeBron at the five and Melo at the five. Then they can when LeBron is at the three and Melo is at the four. They hey, literally can't. They can't, they can't run the same sets. When when DJ's at the five and AD's at the four, when AD's at the five and DJ's off the oh, court, they yeah. literally can't so, run the same sets. Let right? me just say this so real my quick. My point is, my point is, is this still is that with the lineups, I'm not saying anything about the lineups because the lineups are the lineups. The lineups That's are what the you lineups. started off with. You though, start off bro. by saying the lineups, though. No, no, but you, no, no, no. you defend the my play. There is not a single player in NBA history that needs to be optimized like Russell Westbrook. Let me clarify that. Pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. That's not true, Shoe. Come on now. Let's let's write this up because I want to go to somebody else. But you you started this whole conversation by talking about the lineups. Okay, yeah, you're right. I started it right, but let me clarify what I meant though. What I meant is that you can't consistently just at least like the ones that were working, they won the game. The ones that didn't work, they lost more of the games. And you kept just changing instead of just going back to the what actually helped you win or at least make you look like you were a physical opponent. Why do you keep just switch? Oh, like like I remember, I remember vividly. They won a good game. They won a good game. I forgot, I forgot what game it is, but they won a good game. Brian had a good game, and Russell Westbrook actually had a decent game. The next game, they switch the lineup, and they lose badly. I'm telling you right now, there's not a single lineup. There's only, like, one or two lineups, but it wasn't at any noticeable volume. There isn't any lineups that they ran that ended up with any, like, noteworthy minutes that ended up being a good lineup. All of the lineups were bad offense. They were mid or bad offensively and horrible defensively. There just weren't any lineups like that. But but so when you see but but legend, right? But hold up, check this out real quick. The biggest problem with the Lakers is that you had two key. Ball- mute up, key. Mute up, key. It wasn't There's key. It wasn't key. Was that key? I thought I thought key was yeah, I think, talking. I think it, I think it was key. No, it's no, it's Nitro is, is talking now. Well, go ahead, Nitro. What I was saying was, when you look at both players, they should have known this before anything was going on. You got two ball dominant guys. LeBron is the system. He can't have another guy that's ball dominant like that on the team. Russell Westbrook has to be able to run and gun. You feel what I'm trying to say? That would never work next to LeBron. And that's why I'm trying to wonder why they would even make this type of move to begin with. All of us knew that this was going to be a bad idea. I have an answer. Now, I have an answer who- for you. I have oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. LeBron's not a great uh, a great three point shooter. Russ is not a great three point shooter. Uh what's it called? Carmelo's not a great three point shooter. But they Don't put them on the same team and so we're gonna put you on the floor together. Where's the spacing? Please let me respond. I all the guys all the guys no, I don't you know what you said. LeBron LeBron finished like above can shoot. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're saying. Hey, LeBron low, finished hey, like 36 me, percent from three. Melo was shooting like yeah. 40. Like I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're saying. Game. Can that I respond to that game. real quick, bro? Because I believe. Hey, let me say this: the reason this this was move was made is because Russell Westbrook begged LeBron and AD to like, listen, I want to come and win a championship. That's literally what happened. He didn't I, give a fuck about no fit or anything so like that. that really he went up to them this way. summer and was like, "Yo, listen, I think we could really work." And he literally like cornered them into like coming to the Can I? Can I? It's simply that's nasty as fuck. I, that's super nasty, but what we're not about to do is this whole rah rah over each other shit. Real quick, Sage, go ahead, bro, because you've been waiting for a minute. After Sage, we'll go Steve O, and after Steve O, whoever I call. I ain't going to lie to you. Hey, man, I'm taking my time, man. Like, yes, y'all always wanted to burn y'all nonsense. That's cool, but I'm, I mean nonsense very literally. Half of y'all are literally lying. Uh, the man that was just on a rant or whatever, appreciate your gesture, but like, the very first thing he said was something about Russ didn't come there to sacrifice anything. Russ came there to be Russ. Do thirty second Google search to debunk that. I, I I don't I don't know what we're talking about here. Um, I don't I don't know I don't know why for some reason people just can't put bias or can't can't accept facts for facts. And what I mean by that is in the sense of bro, LeBron took. An abnormal amount of jumpers compared to any level in his career. While, and I don't know if it's still true. I don't know why I can't pull up the numbers right now. But while having a not career year inside, because like LeBron's LeBron, but having one of his better years inside, Anthony Davis as well. I know he's been in and out all year. They have one of their better years inside. So the fact that people are in this space 
talking about ways to optimize Russell Westbrook despite those two things. It is it's funny, but I understand people people love Russ. He got his fan base, you know, he got his little MVP. I, I just I just don't know why we're lying though. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't have too much to say. I was just chilling. But I really don't know why we're here lying about Russ. Like if you want Russ to be great, cool. You like Russ still today, cool. But stop lying. You know, y'all are here lying on Russell's name right now. Not not only that before before we unmute, but you're right. I don't like literally they they were they they had like some of the best seasons of their career finishing at the basket. And they still had to take more jump shots because they were trying to make as much as many adjustments as possible. Yeah, whoever was saying the the set thing, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think the same person. That was some bullshit, bro. I'm not gonna cap to you. Like, I, I know you said you hoop or whatever, I guess, but like, you must not be watching the Lakers, man. They they they've tried anything from having Russ post up to having Braun post up. That one of the better games this season, if you want to go the route of. Oh, there was a when they do the good shit, it works. Was this one game? I forgot who they played, but LeBron was actually hitting Russ on a lot of backdoor cuts or whatever. Right? Like, yep. I was like, what the fuck? Russ, Russ hitting backdoor cuts? Russ yep. is playing off ball tonight? What the fuck? Like, that, that was one of the better games of the season of de- demanding Russ to run a pick and roll up top and then saying, oh, that's not working. Do something else. And then giving a solution as to what that would be and just denying said solution. You're talking to loops, bro. So I, I just don't know what we're relying on bro's name. I really and, and and on top of that, the, the Lakers finished top five in, in level of frequency and in, in ISOs and top five in level of frequencies and post-ups. Wonder they why. were li- literally some of the most frequently ran ISO and post-up teams in the entire season. So, like, they, they literally, in terms of Westbrook posting up in half-court set and in terms of at the top of the key running offense, which, honestly, I'm not even here to defend Frank Vogel's offensive sets because they're not that impressive, but – it, it really it wasn't as much as y'all are trying to say, but I when people sit here and say that he was in the corner, like even if we were to run down that train of thought, like that literally might have been the best scenario for him to be in the corner because no other there's no other place on the court that made sense for him when he didn't have the ball in his hands. And then y'all are saying like, well, he needs to optimize his sets. Like, I mean, I, we need to optimize Westbrook. Like we just keep saying, bro, everybody else made adjustments. Like, no, Westbrook is not a player that people need to be consistently making adjustments for. Man, Westbrook. Oh, my fault. I didn't know. No, I'm saying, and if if that is the case, I don't know why he would ever think that it would be okay to come to this team. I just just don't understand. No, 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 no. no. I'm pretty sure you know this already. Westbrook literally verbatim says, quote, I know I'm the one who has to make the biggest sacrifice. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, why, why are we lying right now? Why are we changing history? Russ knew he had to make sacrifices, but them shits didn't work out for him, A, or B, just didn't do them. However you want to interpret it, that's up to you, because clearly we've, we've watched different Laker games this season. But at the end of the day, bro, bro, bro wasn't it, and it was a major reason considering his contract, considering his responsibility, and truth be told, what the Russ fans really don't want to hear, so you have to treat him like a star when he's not at the star level anymore. It, it, it hurt the Lakers a lot, bro. It hurt the Lakers a ton to bring up Frankie V's lack of coaching adjustments or whatever. Bro, been a mid-offensive coach in the bubble. I know y'all. I know y'all like ten years old and call it a bubble ring or whatever. That's fine. You know, ha- have your fun at the lunch table. But truth be told, bro, it worked in twenty twenty one. It was clear enough that hey, the the rim protection. My my hot take is the rim protection was sus. I know some of y'all love the uh twenty twenty one Lakers defense, but despite that, at least. At least we were scoring the ball. <laughs> at least we were scoring the ball. But for some reason, when it comes to Russ, Am I buggy? throw out, out the gun and act like Frank Vogel's a rookie facer. I don't know. I don't know. And, and, and just, just to get the facts out of the way just briefly, I, and I will unmute it. Um, Over 60% of Westbrook shots attempted this year were attempted with 18 to 7 seconds left in the um in the shot clock. 40% of them were attempted with 15 seconds to seven seconds left in the shot clock, which is the average. That's an average shot. That's the average amount of time left of the shot clock that he normally takes. So, no, there was not this insurmountable amount of time where he was given, he was put in these tough situations where there's eight seconds left and all of a sudden he had to start taking that. shots. That's not, that's not how the offense went. He actually was able to attempt shots in a relatively easy amount of, amount of time left in the shot clock. And furthermore, over 60% of his shots that he attempted 
were with him uh, drilling a ball at least three times or more. On thirty-one percent of his time, literally a third of his shots were attempted when he he was dribbling the ball seven times or more. A third. So again, no, y'all, y'all are. I don't know why y'all are. Even if he was in the corner, which I'm not saying he never was, it it wasn't happening at such a rate to where that that defined the makeup of his um of his possessions or his shot selection. It's just not. Westbrook not only had the ball in his hands just as much as a lot of other guards, but he was put in situations to shoot the ball in relatively ease. And there's also metrics that prove that in contrast to the level of difficulties to putting into consideration how close the defender was and how much time is left on the shot clock or on the clock, and in contrast to how how frequently they make it, Westbrook was receiving some of the easiest looks at a, at a certain volume, some of the easiest looks all year long. Who the hell said the eight seconds Steve, left thing? I'm Steve, stuck on that. Steve, uh, Who the hell said that? That like one of the biggest pet peeves of Russ for me personally was the fact that when he takes the ball up, you don't know what's gonna happen, and that's because he would just bolt to the lane, make a horrible pass, or miss a layup. Like, like if if that's me hating, then I guess. But like that, that's literally like one of the main things that was triggering me about L- Russ. Who the hell thinks Russ is going against the shot? L- like, literally, know, literally, 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 you know what's crazy? <laughs> literally, three on average, three of his shots per game, three of his shots per game happen within twenty-two to eighteen seconds in a shot clock. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> three, three shots a game. That is n- nearly twenty percent of his shot attempts. We'll go to Steve-O. Yeah, we watched a different game. Yeah. All right. Hey, right. before I, before I even go. Um, let y'all know now. John Wall's on the way, so Laker fans, uh, don't stop, worry. Stop, 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 stop. But um, I'm, 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 that's I'm, not better. I'm, that's that's not better. No, no, I know, I know. He's just trolling. He's just trolling. You guys, stop, you guys is not. Yeah. But for Rockets fans, it is. But let me start off like this, bro. Because I was listening at first, and I was like, you know what? I was like, I was like, I hear, I hear low scream. I hear those dumb scream. I'm like, what the fuck is going on in the Twitter space world? But uh, let me start off with this. That whole LA Times the article, I saw it at first, and I thought it was a ball sack or you know trolling tweet. I ain't gonna lie to you. If it's LA Times, that shit's most likely going to be real. I, I, I'm not gonna sit up here and and argue with a, a verified source. It is kind of funny that it comes out now, but then again, this is exactly how media works. It, it's, it's just how the media and how newspapers and all that stuff works. They're gonna. This is the perfect time to go ahead and put out this information because people are gonna talk about the team like we're doing right now, like they're gonna do on Monday. It, it, it's just how that shit works. It sucks, definitely sucks, but that's just how that shit works. My thing about this whole Westbrook shit, right? Because I the entire season, right? I've been on, you know what? Westbrook has been playing bad, but let's not also take it too far. What I will say is this, because I think so Sage made a good point. He came into this team having to make the most changes to his game. And he did not do that. But I also want to highlight too that as much as we get on Westbrook and how bad he played, because I I can't stress enough how bad he was this year. And I, I actually before this season, I, I like Westbrook. I mean, cool dude, you know, all that stuff. And I and I think that his game, he's he going to be a Hall of Famer for all the Westbrook fans. I feel you on that. But this year, he was just dog shit. He was just not good. And I do think because of what the Lakers had this season, who they had on the court, I think K, K, uh, uh, K Golda brought it up. He was talking about the lineups on the court. The lineups, to be fair, did not play to the strengths of Russell Westbrook. But... You saw a lot of players like LeBron this year try to cater to his game. And I really feel as if, like, people talk about him being in the corner at times. And even if you are in the corner, you still got to figure out a way to make yourself suitable if it's cutting to the basket. And I think a lot of times when we talk about the main villain of this (laughs) season, Westbrook being the main reason, we got to look at uh, Frank Vogel, Jeannie Buss, and the people that are brought around. And I think just the fact that injuries – injuries – destroyed this team this year because i honestly believe if they were healthy it wouldn't it would not be this bad i'm not saying westbrook would be playing at an all-star level like i'm not saying that shit at all but i do believe that with ad going down with the main shooter like and then on top of that the roster construction too like i was one of the people who thought you know what i said at the beginning of the year on my tiktok i said on the beginning of the year when i was ranking these teams i said you know what bro the lakers are a uh, are a uh nba finals team but if that nigga AD is not there, they're going to be a playing tournament team. Y'all can find it, find it there, find the video, whatever it is, wherever it's at. I literally said that verbatim. And I feel as if, like, as much as this team was bad this year, as much as Westbrook played bad, a whole lot of shit happened. Like, 
Like it's like it's so crazy. Everything that could go wrong for this team went wrong. But if we're gonna be fair and hold these guys accountable, like So Sage said, from the jump, you were supposed to come into this team and make the most changes to your game. And he did not do that. And we saw LeBron. I think uh, Lowe brought up the point. I, it was either Sage or Lowe who just said it right before I started speaking about, you know, J- LeBron taking more jump shots this game. And and and, and it's, it's like it's, it's, it's just a lot of things that just went on this season. Like when you look at the Lakers lineup, I'm like, bro, there's no defense. There's no real reliable shooter. And this team just sucks. Facts. It's, it's, it's just it's just a bad team. And I like again, I'm not giving Westbrook no, no, no praise. But at the end of the day, <laughs> look, bro. You still gotta play better. You still gotta look good. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a rock. I'm a Rockets fan. I'm a Rockets fan. Jalen Green at one point was sitting in the corner. I'm like, bro, what the fuck you don't sit in the corner? Go get the ball. Go make a play. Go do something. These last few games, y'all seen Jalen Green go crazy. You've seen other players who, when it's time to go figure out a way to go score, you're gonna figure out a way to go help your team out. Westbrook didn't do that, and Westbrook at times made it seem as if like, you know what? My name's already. I'm already. I'm already set. I'm already gonna make the Hall of Fame. Uh, basketball is just this. I'm already a winning. I'm already winning at life. And at the end of the day, I know we talk sports and all that shit, and we love these players. That is true, but that does not diminish the fact that we got to talk about your game on the court. So it's it, it's 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 a whole it's a whole lot of shit this year. But to the point of Russ is the reason. Russ is just change the name, Dumbo. Say Russ is the. I hate to say the main reason because at the end of the day, that, that you know what's crazy. All y'all can make a space entirely whatever the fuck you want to name it. <laughs> that's, the crazy part. Here, nah. that's the crazy part. Like y'all, y'all niggas can <laughs> y'all make a space and mode. title it whatever you want to title it. I'm going to title it Russ is the reason. You want to know why? Because if you're telling me in training camp you was already defiant of what the coach wanted, you was already putting your personal wants and gains and your play over the rest of the team, that you're already setting us up for failure. You're the reason. Before any, before anyone other than fucking Kendrick Nunn's knee and Trevor Ariza's spirit was broke, and and wasn't there before any of that. You were fucking up in training. You were fucking up before fans was there. You were fucking up before we even had real pressure on us. You was already fucking up. So you were the reason. You, Russ is the reason. Russ being there is the reason we're this bad because we gutted our team to get him. Russ is the reason because his play style literally does not fit with this team nor no one on this team, to be honest. Yes, in theory, it works with AD, but AD doesn't want to play the five because he's fragile. He gets hurt playing Mitchell Robinson. So it's, he's not the ideal big to put next to Westbrook. Westbrook needs a team by himself. So, yes, Russ is the reason. This team mismanaged the fuck out this roster, signed all these dumbass two-way players, all these fucking G-leaguers, all these random-ass whoever niggas that would be in Lithuania, China, and goddamn Brazil playing basketball if it wasn't for the fact we have Westbrook. Russ is the reason. For all you niggas coming in here to argue with me about the fucking title of the space lane, I mean, you know, Russ isn't the reason. He's one of the reasons. Guess what? I don't care. Russ is the reason. We don't have Russ. We're not in this situation. I wholeheartedly believe it. You disagree? Either tough titty or explain. Dumbo, I said the main reason. Bro, I said bro, the main added reason. Russ. He's reason. Still, he's, he's, still, still, he's, still, he's still saying the reason, though. He's still going to say he's the reason. I'm still going to say the reason. Um, hey, I want it, want it, want it. I'm hey, about to say, let's uh, let me say this. <laughs> um, I want to say Nitro. Nitro. Nitro let me change. say this. If let me Russ- say this, Dom. We added Russ and we lost. We lost. <laughs> we won negative nine more games, bro. Like <laughs> you're spitting. I just want to say this, bro. I've calmed down. Like I- I've never seen. I've been watching basketball for 15. I've never seen a player needing so much out of his surrounding situation just to perform at a mediocre level with someone's talent level as a Russell Westbrook. Um, it, it's, it's just like, <laughs> there's so many factors that are need. I swear to God, if we, were, if we were talking about Damian Lillard, Kyrie Irving, his peers, his current peers, this would not be a topic of conversation because stars, former stars, superstars, they figure it out and they're able to produce because that's what you get paid to do is produce. And so all these outside external fa- factors, you can say we have the worst coach in the world, but people actually still, you know, can put up numbers and put up winning plays. I, I'm very positive that Russell Westbrook wasn't entirely put in positions to succeed most of the time. That's fucking great. Like, it, you have a talent level and you completely went away from it. And so the constant excuses, it's it's exhausting. I, I can't wait till this is over. We won nine less games when we added Russell Westbrook, point blank period. 
And I, I don't know what else more there is to say about that. It's just ridiculous. I'll say this. I'll say this. And I'm going to get a lot of heat for this. But I truly mean this. The best thing to happen to Russell Westbrook's career is also the worst thing to happen to Russell Westbrook's career, which is winning that MVP. Because it put him on such a platform that now we have this standard of him that he's never been able to live, live up to after 2017. So it, it, that's going to be the highlight of his career. But now it is the worst thing to happen to his career, winning that MVP. If he never won that MVP, <laughs> the reason no one about- would have this standard too. So simply put. Should- and listen, last thing I'll say, Laker fans never wanted to hate Russell Westbrook. We wanted to win a chip. But sure. all this selfishness, all sure. this thing going on, go ahead. You can have all those opinions, bro. Like, you're not going to convince me I'm a hater, bro. This is my team. You ain't going to convince me who I like and don't like. <clears throat> That's the funniest part about all this shit. And so you can, like, ride for your guy all that you want. Have fun in Indiana. Have fun in Sacramento. We gonna get back to what we need to do, and that's putting this team back in position. You ain't doing shit. Yeah. You ain't got nothing. Yeah, you sound weird. Uh, if you want, you just put your hands up so we can put in. in, in um, on what you call it, Nitro? Then DJ. I'm not DJ. I'm stupid. Um, Doctor, Nitro. Then Doctor, um, Key. And again, if you want, say something. And what's after that? Listen, I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all, right? Russell Westbrook, yeah, he didn't play great for y'all. That that's fact, right? But let's not act like let's not try to rewrite history on this. All right, Bad. Shub, Shub, you know I've been in spaces with you, bro. Come on, that's now. not my it, name. My name's Shub. Don't call me. Oh, Shub. My okay, name. My Shub. Name's Shub. Oh, Never. now you're getting salty. Why you call us Westbrook, huh? Bro, no one gives a fuck that you upset. We called it bum ass nigga Westbrook. Westbrook, he's a loser. Bro. Yeah, I go cap. He been he been side eyed for like the past five minutes. Nigga, I'm, I'm so sick of you goofy ass niggas, bro. Westbrook, 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 Westbrook. He's a loser. How do you feel, Jimmy? Hmm? How do you feel? Imagine being a grown ass man with a loser as an Abby. I don't understand it. Damn, let a nigga finish. Let a nigga talk. Nah, man, y'all got y'all got to stop thinking everybody hate everybody just because they speak true for or Listen, even just disagree with you. It's yo, crazy. yo, but yeah, like I was saying, so you feel me? Like Russell Westbrook was never gonna fit this team. He just was not going to do it. You, his play style would never mesh next to LeBron. That man. was known before the anybody that knew ball. As soon as he came in here, we knew it was not going to fit. Russell Westbrook is a guy that needs to have the ball in his hands, have shooters around him, and tell him to just go. That's not the way you play with LeBron. That's not the way you. That's just not the way it works. So I get it. Like he played sucky for y'all guys, and I, I fully agree. But for dudes being like, oh, you know what I'm saying, he worthless and everything else like that. Like, wouldn't wasn't wouldn't this be the first year he never made the he didn't make the playoffs? What does that? No, mean? that's not true. But continue. Nah. But also, and also I don't, I'm kind of confused. So, what what does that have to do with anything? And in, what do you mean? What does that have to do with it? Listen, Russell Westbrook wasn't your entire problem, bro. <laughs> there was a whole bunch of dysfunction in Los Angeles land, bro. And uh, the biggest person was the defense. injury, and defense was second. Wait, who who's the biggest problem? Injury. But even and when they were playing, defense. but even even when they were playing, or even when two of them were playing, they still weren't a good team. Anthony Davis. Even when LeBron, even even when LeBron, even when LeBron and Westbrook were were playing, they weren't a good team. So what? There's no way. There's no way niggas is really about to sit on this stage and tell me a Laker team being led by Kyle Kuzma, KCP, and Caruso was able to gather more wins than a team with LeBron and Russell Westbrook. Don't tell me (laughs) that. Crazy. Don't tell me that. Hey man, before you. Before you unmute them, bro, I got to ask these Russ fans, and I'm probably building my own grade with these, man. But is this a consolation prize for y'all? Because I keep seeing people go at the title so so specifically, like we don't know. Bro, it's a fucking title. No, no, Dom Dom believe that shit. No, 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 no. no. So I'm just – no, he can mean it all you want. But I'm just saying, bro, like, is it a consolation that he was was just one of the reasons, but he was like – one it one beat or one like bro because of listen, reason. Listen, listen, the- listen, listen. Let me let me go ahead and let y'all know. Let, nah, let me pull the veil back. Shit. Wait, 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 low stop because you about to have my DMs flooded for no reason. Listen, <laughs> let let me let me pull the veil back, bro. All season I've said Rob Palinka was the biggest problem for the Lakers. 
Rob Polinka building this weak ass roster. Rob Polinka mismanaging assets. Rob Polinka dead ass going away from the formula that's got us a championship. I've been saying that all year. It's documented on the podcast. It's documented all over the place wherever I speak. There are spaces up on. Y'all should check them out. My boy Jay does spaces plugs. It's on plenty of space plug videos where niggas is talking about the Lakers. Where I would bring up Rob Polinka being our biggest issue. I've said that from day one. But if we're talking about the players, if we're talking about all the people that actually deserve blame on this Laker team, I'm not going to blame AD because, again, like say, like my boy Sage said, AD had one of his best careers performing at the rim. And, look, this will really prove you niggas are real Laker fans or y'all really just here for the niggas on the team. Niggas bitched and moaned for two years about AD wanting to settle outside, not being tough, not using his inside game. So yeah, this year when time. he did play, he banged inside, had a career high in his numbers, was one of the better finishers and efficiencies at the rim this season. Yes, his jump shot was weak. Yes, his three-pointer sucked. But that's because he put an emphasis on going inside and lumping himself the fuck up when he didn't want to play the five to try to score. He did that. I'm not blaming him. AD told us from the beginning, from the beginning, he doesn't want to play the five permanently. He doesn't want to be our main option at the five. He will play situational five. That's what y'all fucking up. Everyone wants him to be the center. He is not capable. His body is made of frail glass, bro. He's Mr. Glass. He gets hurt. I bring this up all the time. I watch this man struggle to keep health against Mitchell Robinson. I get it. Mitch put on a little bit of weight since he's gotten the league. He's still built like a buff Brandon Ingram, bro. If you're telling me he can't stay healthy against Mitchell Robinson, what do y'all think he's going to do against these 250, 60, 70 pound bigs on a permanent 34 to 40 minute basis? It's not going to look good for him. He's going to be spending a lot of time in street clothes. I'm not blaming him. I'm not blaming LeBron. A lot of you goofy ass niggas is going around spreading this rhetoric. Man, LeGM fucked up. Hey, man, LeGM got Russ. LeGM got Melo. LeGM got everybody. LeBron was consulted. LeBron probably did say he wanted X, Y, but he did not say he wanted A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. He did not go to Rob Polinka with a list of niggas and said, hey, bro, look, after you trade everybody, we have this money, get these players right here. I'll make it work. That's not how it worked. He's not LeGM. He's just a franchise player, which you consult any franchise player. No one was calling Kevin Durant. Look, having the fucking GM Durant when niggas wanted a certain coach over another coach, and he had input on that. No one said it. When he had input and had say so on trying to get James Harden or whether to get James Harden, no one back in the eye. But that's him. a that's a that's a great example because as as much as people criticize Steve Nash, nobody's not going around right now saying that Kevin Durant is the fucking problem because he wanted Steve Nash. I've never, I've actually never heard that before. No, I'm telling you, bro. Listen, man, listen. I understand y'all niggas think I'm a troll. It's knowledge up here, bro. L- through the toxicity comes knowledge and enlightenment, bro. I'm, I'm real with this shit. No one calls Kevin Durant GM Durant. No one says it. No one says when Kawhi Leonard, his mute ass tells them niggas at the fucking Clippers what he wants. No one says, oh man, hey yo, Kawhi built this team. No one says that. It's only with LeBron James. So stop that bullshit. LeBron, LeBron, I'm not blaming LeBron for Rob Polinka building a bad roster. So out of all the players, LeBron, I'm not blaming him. He did have games where he should have played better. He did make bad decisions. Cool. But I'm not blaming him for the season. AD, if you want me to blame his health, cool. I'll blame his health. But I'm not blaming him as a player. But Westbrook, the nigga that didn't want to change his game, the nigga that went into training camp with a defiant mindset to what the fucking coach wanted that coached him out of the playoffs in two years ago, For him to go there in training camp and refuse to buy into the system then, and you can see his game didn't change at all this entire season, except occasionally, especially when his ass actually got benched, but for the most part, he still wanted to be Westbrook. I'm going to blame Westbrook. Out of all the players, Russ is the problem. Russ is the reason. So you niggas up here trying to fight for this battle of saying... It's not just Russ. No one cares. Argue the article. Argue Russ being a problem. Argue him being a problem. Y'all over here, bro, you're saying he's B problem when he's A problem. Y'all arguing semantics, bro. Y'all not arguing the point. You niggas is coming up here agreeing with what we're saying, but, bro, instead of having a title say B, it should say A. Get the, make your own space, nigga. What, what are we doing? What are we doing? Argue the fucking point. Russ is a problem. If I say Russ is the problem, we grown ass men agree to disagree, nigga. R- argue Russ ain't being a problem. I ain't gonna hold you. Though. I might, I might, I might say he is the problem because I, I, <laughs> I, I might. Because, and the only reason why is because I is the audacity of somebody to start the fucking season telling the coach what he is and isn't going to do, 
even though everybody else is going to have to agree with the philosophy. Like, literally, LeBron James is on the team, and Anthony Davis is saying, yeah, anybody needs to bring the ball up except for Dwight and DJ. And the fact that, like, there's even a fucking budge out of Westbrook's lips to, de- to deny that is crazy to me. That's crazy. Russ has the worst <laughs> sound bites. <laughs> I'm not going to say in history. It's probably your worst, but the, the runaway favor for this year, man. If, like, it's like every week he'll say something that's just like, what the fuck? Like, doesn't care about fans. Um, for, A couple weeks prior to that, didn't have championship expectations. Like, like. Y'all, y'all gotta help y'all boy in these interviews, man. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say, bro. This shit's crazy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who's going. Hey, Dom. You know what the funniest thing is? Ironic, because semantics about the space title, bro. We're ar- arguing over semantics with the fucking article today about who's who in the fucking training camp bringing the ball up, bro. It's just technicalities and semantics with all these people. They got nothing left because the encore product isn't there. All they talk about in arguments is what Russ was like in Washington, what he was like in 2017, because there's no fucking one positive thing that Russell Westbrook did on a consistent basis in the 2021-2022 season. And honestly, most of it I'll isn't. Think- he has no one to blame but himself, and he's going to find out when he ends up in. Yo, Domo, question. Question. <laughs> Listen, moving forward, what would you guys do differently then, Right. If, he, if he's the big not trading problem... for Russ, not trading for Russ. Yeah, Next yeah, thing, not, not trade for Russ. Next thing, that that would not be uh, not trading. Russ should. Are not you saying trade. what would we do differently, or what would the no, next step be? No, 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 no. I'm saying moving forward now. This mm-hmm. let's be real. This season's over for y'all, right? So moving for next season, what do y'all need to do? Because I know y'all gonna get rid of Russ. Can That's I answer that? One. Well, do you wait, wait. If they can get rid of Russ. Wait, hold on. Let, let me say because I, I know. I we know. We know. will. Russ, you're nasty. Russ, listen. It's only two things we can do. A, trade this nigga witch. I ain't gonna lie. Like I said earlier, a lot of you niggas that was in here making them fucking rust, like, rust of the Hornets or the Hornets contender spaces yesterday, all you niggas that bought all the hype around Russ actually having interest in the Hornets or having interest from the Hornets, y'all bought into that with no fucking, with no looking. You didn't deep dive the semantics then. But when this comes out, now you're fucking the best detective in the world. Batman is low set. But it's cool. If Russ really does have interest from the Hornets, which I highly doubt, Trade him or trade him anywhere. I don't they want care. To get off Gordon Thompson, Give him the cow. Cal- I will take the Cal Corver deal, which was cash considerations and a fucking fax machine. I will take anything to get him off our books, off our team. I don't care what it is. I would preferably want just role players. I know I'm not getting picks that matter. It so trade Russ. We can't trade Russ. Trade LeBron and AD for every fucking value asset you can. That is the next step. That's the only two options. Trade Russ and then try to build a deep team with AD and Bron. Or keep Russ for another year, let him get off the books next year, and then you just tank. We tank, fuck it, who cares? It doesn't matter because we have fucking Russell Westbrook on our team. We know we're not going to win. So trade fucking AD, trade LeBron, get as many picks, young players, whatever it is, whatever we can manage. That would be what I say. Sage low, y'all got it. Uh, the Lakers, the Lakers are in a fuck situation. Don't be delusional, lie to yourself. It's the same thing. Not hating on the Lakers. I'm a Lakers fan for those that don't know me, so I'm not hating when I say it. It's a fuck situation, bro. Like it, it's it's up. I don't. I forgot who has the pick. I think the Grizzlies do because they traded it. But yeah, like we just gave someone a top ten pick acquiring Anthony Davis, bro. It, I'm not gonna. I'm. I don't know how else to explain obvious shit. And that's what people are good at dodging, apparently, for some reason. Like, everybody wants to be the smartest guy in the room. Bro, the Lakers have a bunch of expiring contracts. They have a they have a point guard taking up damn near $50 million, which that would be my, if I had to say who is the reason, that would be my argument. The fact that Russ being here disqualifies the Lakers from doing many, many, many things. That would be my argument, but I, I digress. Like, in terms of having hope for a following season, don't, don't, don't have it. Just, just chill the fuck out. Maybe some shit happens that you didn't expect, but don't have these high standards for the Lakers next year. They have no assets and they have no money. It's up. Um, just just trade Russ. <laughs> just trade Russ, and if and if LeBron isn't going to commit long term, then it looks like you're you're probably leaning more to rebuilding. But trade Russ, even if you can't get nothing for Russ. Um, I mean, if 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 LeBron is going to stay long term. I would be willing to move Russ literally for anything, and I legitimately mean anything. Um, but you just you just need to he just has yeah, to come off. He, he gotta go. He gotta do something. Yo, all right, we're gonna go to Dr. Doofenshmirtz because he's been waiting. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So if you even if you take out like this year because Russell Westbrook had all career lows, what has Westbrook shown you in the last five to six years as the first option to where it was, oh, can this team win 70 games? Can this team is this is this the best team assembled for LeBron James? Like obviously it wasn't, but after if you take the year after KD left, he wins MVP, right? They get the sixth seed. Bounce in the first round. What was he doing with Victor Oladipo who was playing like shit? It is what it is. But then the next year they get Paul George and Carmelo. Carmelo doesn't really do much. It, you know, it was just kind of a bad fit for whatever reason. Paul no, George was no, the no, scapegoat. No, no, you did not just use bad fit. No, you didn't just do that. Are, are, so are, do that? are we denying that Carmelo Anthony wasn't playing like a trash can on the Thunder? Hold on, you what said are we, a bad I'm, fit. You said a bad fit. You ain't. But go ahead, go ahead. But he was playing like, bad. Let me change it. Not bad fit. He was playing bad for the Thunder for whatever reason, right? But they got Paul George. They get bounced by rookie Donovan Mitchell in the first round. And the blame wasn't on Russ. So whoever said that, oh, Russell Westbrook was brought in to be the scapegoat for when they lose, that's dumb because you guys have been trying to absolve him from blame for all of the miscomings that the Thunder have had. It was, oh, Paul George isn't the one that got – wasn't Paul George the one that Joe Ingles was scoring 25 on? like And got five points? I mean, when you go two for 16 and five points in the, clo- in the final game of the series, you do deserve some blame. We, exactly. Now Russ, Russ definitely Russ deserves blame. blame for that se- yeah. for that series too. But to sit and act like Paul George didn't deserve any of the blame that he got, he deserves some. Russ deserves some. But continue. And then if you, if you even take the year, it was the year they lost three one after the comeback from the Warriors, and KD left the year after. It was Westbrook was giving the ball to KD in the fourth in the last two games. KD was the one that was shooting twenty percent from three. It's KD's fault. And so you, you like back, to listen to the Russ fans that aren't objective, okay? It's just this is just how Twitter works and how it was in general, right? That's that's what everybody was saying. And then in the third year, in the second year with Paul George, Damian Lillard goes out there and shoots a forty footer. Paul George is sitting there like it's a bad shot. You lost to the fucking Trailblazers, man. Mm. Made it to the Western Conference Finals. I was just about to say, did they make it to the Western Conference Finals? We know that was a bad loss. Nah, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was was a bad loss, bro. I just want to say one thing, one thing, one thing. There is no such thing as an objective Russell Westbrook fan. Thank you. All right. Oh, my God. You're nasty. (laughs) Yo, look. It was a bad shot. It was definitely you. I mean, not best you. That was it was a bad loss for us. Really nigga was a bad, and it was yeah, a bad it, shot it too. Was a PG bad wasn't loss. lying. That nigga took a step back three and a half court. That was a bad shot. I, and, I, and, I and it was almost blocked. Bad for loss. I just no, said it's not. they made it for to the end. It was almost blocked. Which they did. I mean, yeah, but I, I but still, I mean, it was they, a bad loss. You're right. It, it was a it bad, was a bad loss. loss. It was a bad loss. Right. And I agree with that. I'm never. I'm not disputing that. Russ was terrible in that series. Um, but it. For context, well, I've had the floor before. I want everybody else to who hasn't had. Yeah, the floor. but it, it was it was a just all around. It was a bad loss for us. I mean, even even if they had, even if hypothetically, when they just lose that series, them losing in five is just it's just it's just, it's just it, uh, irrefutably a bad loss, especially with the way that um Westbrook played in the closeout game. And we talk about closeout games in Utah. That closeout game where he shot he won eleven for thirty one in that closeout game was like ridiculous. But um. I mean, I I never disputed that. I never. Every no, no, no. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just saying point, in general. But every time a Russ fan pokes a hole in something, now everyone else has to come with their pitchforks and poke holes in Russ's shortcomings. I well, I I I attack certain points that don't have context. That's all I do as a Russ fan. I just try to attack certain points that don't have context. And I always hold Russ accountable when he is not playing up to par, when he's doing like I've I've always done that. So it's not fair to me to act like I don't hold Russ accountable. I do. But I also add complete context. And that is something that should be allowed. It it, it should not be seen. It should not be made out to seem like if you say, all right, Russ didn't play well enough this year, but coaching is. A, a part of the reason why this team was poor as well. The front office was a part of the reason why this team was poor as well. And if I personally, as my own man, have to divvy up the blame on the pie, I would put uh, Russ about 30%. I put front uh, office about. To think that they, that all Russ fans think that when he goes to the Hornets, it's going to be like, they're going to be well, like. He's a, not going to the Hornets. The Hornets don't no, want no, him. No, no. no nobody wants said, Russ. Russ fans said that 
if he goes to the Hornets, they're gonna be a championship team. I did not say that. I did not say that. Nobody what are you talking said that. About? Yeah, what are you yeah, talking about? What are you about? saying? Like, <laughs> I, I fuck with you, bro, but nobody said yeah. that. Hopefully he doesn't yeah, go to this the is, Hornets, is, bro. Is, look, look, let me wait, 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 I'm I'm a, wait, wait, no, 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 because niggas is dead ass. Yeah, I don't, I, I've never, I, I don't, I've never even heard of anybody say what I said, I'm not. Did he say lower down? Because I know for a fact I ain't say that dumb shit. I've never even heard anybody say that outside of this room. I don't think anybody said that. This this is why I said what I said when I muted the space, bro. I, I don't know what goes on in y'all mind when y'all hear stuff. Maybe you hear non-positive shit and just construct your own story. But this is why I said what I said, bro. Y'all, y'all, y'all just get mad, bro. Y'all don't really listen to nobody. That's tough. I just I just before we go to the um I don't know if Doctor wanna finish this point or something, but I just want to be clear that I think that part of the reason why this this goes on, and I've and I've said this for LeBron fans as well, or LeBron stands, wherever they are. I think that they y'all end up doing more harm than good when y'all try to big up a player. Because when, when I've been told for the past two to three years that Westbrook is such a great player that you can put him on basically any team and he can lead them to the playoffs, and then they use the Washington year as an example and disregard his entire teammates that he had with him as if like he wasn't playing with Bradley Beal. Like, when, when y'all say things like that, Y'all put, and I'm not saying you, West, but I'm just saying for the people in general, when people say shit like that, y'all, y'all are putting players on such a pedestal that nobody doesn't want to put them on a pedestal. And so when the season begins and the pedestal that was being put on these players was, and I'm, I'm not saying anybody in here particular say it, but I'm pretty sure we all heard it. Hey, they're great. They're Hall of Famers. They're da 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 da. They'll just figure it out because that's what Hall of Famers, that's what all time greats do, that's what top 75 players do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty sure we've all heard that. So, when you put this, when you, and, and in almost disregarding the any anything else that could happen, because coaching didn't matter then, the GMs didn't matter then, it didn't, nothing mattered. It was just, well, they're great Hall of Famers. They're going to figure it out because that's what they do. When you do that, you're setting them up to fail. Because at that point, you're putting so much unrealistic expectations on them that when they fail this miserably, well, at the beginning of the season, you knew Frank Vogel was going to be coaching, and you still said what you said. And we've all known Frank Vogel is not that great of a coach. And so I think what a, a lot of this conversation stems from are people who say idiotic statements. There's verified accounts who say the shit that I just said. Kendrick Perkins went on TV saying the shit I said that saying that this team has the ability to win 70 games. Why, Perk? Oh, because they're all great Hall of Famers, and that's why they're going to figure it but out. But legend, question. How many games did all three of them play together? He, they played 21. 21. 21. And they were but 11 like, and 10 he, in those but, 21. But check it out, right? And I terrible. said this before, right? Oh, real quick, because I don't want to cut nobody off. I said this before. If you've noticed any time teams have had this type of collective of talent, it takes them time to figure it out. If you remember when the Heat first came together, it took them time. Remember, the Heat only won, what was it, uh, 50 games, 50-something 50 games, when the, when it was Dwayne in his prime, LeBron in his prime, 56. Bosh in his prime. I, and they were 90, I said, they were 9 to 8 through the first like, 17. I hate this argument so much. That's why that's why I was saying I felt like in oh I, and look I'm not saying you're wrong I'm just saying from my perspective that's why I felt like injury was the big because they never truly had time to mesh together because it takes time when those type of egos are put together now you can disagree but I'm just using I'm just using like like all the other teams that were put together like that not counting Golden State they don't count can, hey, look, can, as can a, I, I, I want to I want to appeal yeah, to all I this. And say go this ahead, go ahead, I, 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 I just I just hate that I, and I'll, I hate I'll that just argument. say this I'll say this quickly Wes even even using that argument even there was enough games being played with LeBron and Westbrook who are the two players that people routinely say you can put them on whatever team you want to and they're still going to lead them to the playoffs those are the two players that people routinely talk about that they can carry any team in the playoffs. They play over 50 some, they play 50 some games together and they still had a losing record. So I, I'm so confused to what we're talking about. Let's be clear here. We're not talking about a team that finished the season one game below 500 or first round exit. We're talking about a team that is 17 games below 500 and can't even muster up a playing appearance. They're playing so bad that 
literally in every it don't matter how you want to cut it or slice it even in the games in which lebron ad and westbrook are playing they still have the same offensive and defensive rating that the team has as a whole that game when they played against the pelicans and they lost the same offensive and defensive rating that they've had so if i'm being told for years and years and years and years and years regardless if they're delusional or not but even by nba players that Russ and, and LeBron are so great that you can put them on any team in the NBA and they can just carry them to the playoffs. Well, then those are the expectations that they put themselves on. But, bro, I mean, but that's but what that, I'm saying. On, but they didn't have enough time to play together. Hold on, Nitro. They no, played 55 to, games. Right, Nitro. But to add, to really add context, people are saying peak Russ, peak Bron can do that. They're not saying year 19 Bron can take any team to the play because he's not – what he was in his peak, and you understand right. that as well. well as no, no, West, 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 out here. How, how, how many this season, bro? That you could put Russ on the Magic and they'd still make the. I, right. literally, literally, they, I, I didn't just say that. Be so. That's the thing that I'm saying. You niggas don't listen. No, and it's hold only on, hold when on, bro. it's a Russ fan talking. Go ahead, say that's somewhat hypocritical, considering many of the same. I see, I see this three, four people saying the same kind of arguments. All of you have brought up Wizards, Russ. Which I don't know about I never you, did but that's that. not too far. I never did that. Okay, well, a lot of you guys in your arguments are likely to refer to Wizards Russ at some point. But in time. but, but what, either what, way, what's, what's I, not, either way, not, I just want to. Oh, go ahead. Go I ahead. just think, but you. not you. But like he just sat there and said, let's not act like most of those people making those arguments aren't don't immediately refer right back to last year's Wizard um Russ season when they talk about how he can carry a team. Let's not talk about. Let's not act like. All season long, I've tried. I've had to hear people tell me that LeBron, he's still in his prime. Like, let's not act All like right. that's not been the dialogue that's been going on. And so, sure, there, there, there may not have been, uh, um, there may not be like, uh, um, they may not believe that there's a steep fall off, but they, they're clearly saying that these players are still good enough for it to pan out. And if you're telling me that there's 55 games where Westbrook and LeBron are playing alongside one another and they're still below 500, well, that is more than enough of a sample size to conclude that this wasn't going to work out. So the point I'm making is, yes, I knew before the season began this was going to struggle and have problems. The problem, though, is that the reason why people are getting this type well, of energy, especially from me, okay. is because in the beginning of the season when, was, when this was attempting to be conveyed in a more uh, mal-mannered tone, People didn't want to hear it because all I was told was they're stars, they're Hall of Famers, they're all-time greats, they'll figure it out, you don't know ball. That was essentially the, the, the shut down any argument to question what's going on. Not only from me, not only from Dom, and the conversations that were being shut down or who was leading the pack weren't only other Russ stands, weren't only other LeBron stands, weren't only other ex-NBA players and media members, but LeBron James himself said that. Oh, yeah, he did, he did. He came out and he did. He came out in the Twitter thing and said that, uh, don't don't say nothing when we switch up. Exactly. Keep that same energy. So he said yeah, the same I, thing. So Legend, that's my point. Legend, I agree with you, bro. I'm just saying that all my point is I'm not disagreeing with you because like I said before, I said I never thought this was going to work. But for something like this to work, you have to have the time on the court. A lot of time, you have to have almost the entire season together to to, to form a bond and relationship on the court. And if and, and and I use the Heat as an example. Weren't they like in their first like uh forty games of the first Heat season? They were like barely above five hundred. They finished the season with fifty six wins. Yeah, yes, bro. They went on a tear. But I'm saying, but they okay, all played. Okay, but where, where was the tear that they were, where Russ and LeBron were going to go on in the 55 games that they played? But legend, uh, before, but before, that you answer that, before you answer that, before you answer that, how many the games did they win? How many games also, they... add on to your answer. Um, yeah, yeah. Where, where was the obvious like fit for this for this trio? So, for example, when we look at Miami, we looked at Miami as a. A, a trio that was ruining basketball, the big three, everybody. LeBron was an enemy, so it's no shit we knew how talented that trio tru truthfully was going to be. When Russ became a Laker, the narrative was, hey, I mean, they just going to figure it out just because they great, or how the fuck is this going to work? So while, you, while you're answering Lowe's question, please add on to that. Also, also, 40 games into the uh, 2011 season, 
the Heat were like thirty and nine. So oh, okay, so he's just wrong. and and they were because and into night into night tricks, and you're asking me it was broken up. Not really. Between the seventeenth game in the season and the forty eighth game in the season, um, LeBron only missed two games. He played thirty out of thirty two games in a row. Thirty. If that's not a, if that is not enough games for you, fine. I'll go even further. Between he played, if it'll pop up for me, he played forty eight games out of a. 50, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He played 48 games out of a 56-game sample size. 48. All of which, except for, I think, one or two, were played alongside Westbrook. How many games does he have to play for for them to figure it out? Because if you're playing 48 games out of 56, which is 85% of the available games he played, how many more games do you need to play? That's a lot of that's a right, lot yeah. of facts. Yeah, that's that. So, I ain't gonna lie. So, as a Russ fan, I just want to appeal to the rest of the Russ fans. Um, please, please, just just for my personal sake, when you go in other spaces or or this space, don't say any shit about Russ not being at fault for this season because he definitely deserves some blame and some culpability. Please don't say anything about. His, his past and the things that he's done throughout his career because niggas don't want to talk about that and want to address this season. And when you are appealing, you know, to, to this season and trying to make basketball points about these, this season, the best thing, in my opinion, for you to say about Russ's performance this year, I've always said this, and I think it's the best way to frame the season. Through December, he was not playing exceptionally well, but he was not god-awful. He was not god awful through December. And you you know, you can watch game tape and you can look at the numbers and both things back that he was not god awful through December. So then there was a switch. Russ had a non turnover game at the end of December. The team won the game anyway, but um those non turnovers were terrible. Uh Russ was just completely out of control and Vogel Immediate, like you could tell that the system was altered a little bit to make sure that Russ was not handling the ball as much. He wasn't as dominant with the ball because his decision making was really, really poor at the time, and he was just doing a lot of dumbass shit. And you know, as a Russ fan, I can admit that. So from that moment on, Russ call it him being stubborn, call it whatever you want to call it, but Russ played like shit. For like the next two months of the season, he was he was bad, and as a Russ fan, there's no excuse for it. All I can do is try to add why I think he was so bad and why he played like such shit. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with not being on the same page with the coaching staff and not agreeing with the way that they were operating the team. Does he have a right to do that? To some people, no, and I can I can fully respect that. Frank Vogel is a championship coach. Because of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, sure, if we want to give him that cred, great. Is is Frank Vogel a top 10? Is he a top 15 coach in this league? Not at all. So, I mean, in the coaching hierarchy, where does Frank Vogel rank compared to Russ in his hierarchy for his career? You don't want that question. Okay. No, you don't no, want that no, question. No, 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 no. Yeah, you don't want that question. Want that question. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm 100% right with anything i just know that when it all, when it's all said and done russ will be seen as a better basketball player than frank vogel was seen is as a coach that is undisputable in his career I, you sure. know whatever i said also, in that also, career. That's I, what I, I think said. you're gassing that december stretch like way too much I ain't oh okay you're so, gassing I, it I respect, that. I respect that nick i respect that D, dj steve-o i respect well, that it's that was me that was, that was nick who said it that was me oh okay i respect that nick and b souls it's just my my opinion I think Russ um, will will go down for what he did for his career better than um, Frank Vogel will for what he did in his career. I'll, I'll, I'll just say this real quick, quick about the December down. thing because I've I've heard I've heard that point brought up a lot uh, the last couple months that uh, the Lakers were six and eight in December and I, I'm looking at the stats right now. Yes, Russ shot shot 48 percent from the field, but he had a true shooting percentage of 52 percent because he was still shooting 33 percent from three and 59% from the line. 
Yes, he had eight turnovers, but he was still averaging damn near five turnovers a game. I don't know why you can look at that stretch and say he played good. I guess the bar is just that low for I, us. I now, said but I he said he wasn't god awful. It's it's also kind of like was he god awful? It's an insult to injury. That's and damn near like, god awful. He's averaging he, high turnovers okay. and it's, usage it's, rate it's is low. So it doesn't that like that's an issue. Nick, if you're you playing say? with a player that has a that his usage rate from his past is down, and his turnovers are still at the same level as the as it was during his high usage years, then there's an issue at hand there. I acknowledge that. I, I definitely acknowledge that. I will say, though, when Russ stopped turning the ball over, the team continued to turn the ball over a lot. So, tomato, tomato, same issue um, existed. Like, the team was turnover prone. Whether Russ was turning the ball over or LeBron was turning the ball over or the, the role players were turning the ball over, the team still turned the ball over. So, again, just adding complete context. Russ did not play well enough this year. He did not play well really at all this year. It was very small, minimal stretches where he played well. And even in those stretches, his well wasn't compared, doesn't even come close to his well in previous seasons. And I can admit that and I respect that. I just, again, objectivity and I want respect on Russ's name. Um, and I don't like the West Brick shit. And I, I fuck with Domo. I fuck with Dom. He knows this. We follow each other. Solid nigga. The West Brick shit, corny. Y'all need to stop it. And um, being super disrespectful um, I think is just a little too much. You know, The only thing I'll say to Russell Westbrook though, bro, uh, is that and what I never understood is how did he get so bad from the line? Like career wise, he's it's a mental worse thing. From the line R- Russ, season. it's not a to me. It's Russ, not a Russ, mental thing. It's people more of think like, Russ is super, super strong mentally, and I think that's that's not like a hundred percent truth. As a Russ fan who's watched him his entire career, Russ gets really rattled easily um, by outside noise and this notion that Russ that like he he blocks out the noise and shit like that. That's not true. Russ is, um, and he's a Scorpio. He's very emotional. No. The things that people no. oh, think. Yeah. Come on, Wes. 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 Come I, I listen. I can respect people thinking that the West Brick shit is corny. I 100 percent agree. I think the Lamicky and A Disney shit is corny. But you know what's funny? West Brick wouldn't have that name if he could hit a fucking shot. West Brick wouldn't have that name if he wasn't shooting off the side of the fucking backboard. Be, uh, backboard. West Brick wouldn't have that problem. He wouldn't have his name if he wasn't missing layups and dunks. So if he makes shots, he loses that name. I, I'm just saying. I, I won't call him that if he doesn't p- perform poorly. My only thing I, is. My only thing is, despite and I'm very short, despite the fact that like it is a corny name, I it's weird that of all players in the league, Russell Westbrook is the one where the therapists come out for slandering a player, considering he's like one of the more prolific shit talkers in the league. It's actually kind of crazy. Uh, and I'm I'll be quick too. Um, just to fact check what you said, Wes, about the turnovers. When Westbrook started, when the turnovers started to go down for Westbrook, so basically after that nine turnover game, from that moment on until the last game he played against Phoenix. The Lakers have been an average turnover team. Before that, they were top three in turnovers. So they went from a top three turnover team, turning the ball over 16 times a game, to turning the ball over like 11 times a game. So, no, they, they, that's just, it's just factually incorrect. It improved their ability. They, him, him not handling the ball and not turning it over helped them out tremendously. That's just factually incorrect. Can I, I, add this I real said quick? they continue to turn the ball hey, over a lot. And but every, everybody's going to turn the ball over. They, hey. they went from one of the worst to an act. Go average. ahead, Steve-O. All right, but I'm going to add this real Face. quick, and, and y'all can bring me down. But um, uh, I'm at the point where they're going to have to trade LeBron and AD for sure. There's, there's just no trade package for Westbrook. I've been, telling, I've been telling people this, and I people keep telling me it's like I'm, I'm joking around, like I'm, like I'm, you know, I'm trolling. But, like, I'm so serious when I tell you John Wall is probably going to be a Laker. Like, that's the only trade package they have for Russell Westbrook. Westbrook has no trade value, bro. I'm hearing people saying he's going to New York. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> Who they finna give you for Westbrook, bro? Like, and on top of that, like, the free agent market this year is ass. Next year, the Pelicans owe y'all's pick. Actually, their pick right now could go eighth in this draft. Hello, Mathurin. They might get ben, uh, Benedict Mathurin. And 
next year they can get whichever whatever they all wherever y'all fall right they can swap that pick too so i'm at the point where it's like you know what westbrook was bad this year and i'm telling you the only the only trade package that really makes sense for westbrook is the Lakers sending Westbrook in a pick to Houston for Wall and maybe packaging Wall with somebody else to go ahead and get that off your books. But, like, it, it's not looking good, bro. They're going to have to look at some, like, trades for AD and LeBron, bro. Like, that's probably what's going to happen. I asked this already. I asked them that. I asked. I, asked, that, that, I, I remember you asking that question. I was, that's what I wanted yep. to respond about. Because, honestly, for y'all who are Laker fans, right, if, like, I think Domo had it. He had, like, two trade packages, right? It was, like, either trade Russ or trade LeBron and AD. If the only trade package you got for Russ was – John Wall, right? For instance, let's say John Wall. Would you guys be okay with that, or would you just say, you know what, blow this shit up and let's go ahead and uh, start over? I, I say, I say, trade AD. I mean, trade LeBron if they came to the conclusion that he's not signing long term, and that's regardless of whatever package. Because I don't, I don't think that there's enough moves to be made that would make sense to trade. Um, to trade on um, what's his name? There, there's not enough moves that make sense that could salvage the situation for you not to trade. Um, to not to not trade LeBron. So if if he's not willing to commit long term, there's no need to run the risk of keeping him. But hold up, if y'all trade, this is the funny part, right? And this is what I was trying to get out of y'all because if y'all trade LeBron and AD, you guys are going to be looking to tank, right? Okay. Yeah, this that's that's, I, probably, that's probably when Russell Westbrook's going to be at his best because he ain't going to have to share the floor with nobody. He might actually get y'all to the playoffs. Man, y'all got to stop this, man. What the? Real with you. No, and sir. You know no, I'm sir. Y'all got to stop. No, sir. Home, with what, you know Russell? I'm not lying. I'd like to say, I'd like to say something. Like, and I understand, Lo, you did say, like, if they do try to trade LeBron and AD, like, I, that's a tough move to do either way because it's like, you would really love to have your first round pick more than you would love to have another team's pick, especially if you're trading LeBron or AD. Because easily, like, you can see they can still win you games, especially if you give them a good roll role cast. Like if you trade them to a bottom feed team that have decent role players, like you give LeBron Orlando LeBron right now, they will win enough games that that pick the whoever picks you give up is not going to be, in my opinion, won't be as worth as much as you did before. But what in my this, opinion, this, the first this, round this, picks that you threw away. For the last couple of years and all the money that you put in terrible players is what's holding the Lakers in this terrible situation. I know what it, you, we're talking about the difference of having um, a, a, a late lottery pick and come contrast to not having a pick at all. Like, I understand yeah, yeah. what you're saying, but yeah. The, like, yeah, like the late, you, you would much rather have something, but the Lakers are about to prepare themselves to have nothing with a pick. So, like, I, I understand that they put themselves in a situation where they end up losing valuable draft picks like why just don't don't put yourself in a situation where you you don't have the option at all and so I, again i'm not saying that it's it's going to be undeniable like the, the team will be out there but i i just feel like if, if lebron is not committing there's nothing of value that you're going to get in in westbrook that would should, that should truly convince anybody that this team will be able to compete and maybe even retain lebron especially if he's still not committing but what so are you going to get for anthony fair, davis fair. But what can you even get for Anthony Davis? That's, Anthony Davis I don't, that's also your issue. I don't, but I don't. Yeah, I don't Anthony I think, Davis is injury prone. I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not that interested in semantics because the the concept is just to blow it up anyway. So even if you get less for Anthony Davis than what you gave up for Anthony Davis, then then really so be it. Because at the end of the day, I don't think I if if LeBron and, and Russ leave next year, Anthony Davis has proven that he's not he's not a great enough player to just lead teams in, into deep postseason runs or into a, a playoff appearance at all. So he's not he's not the type of player where he's a he's a floor raiser to the tune of being like a six or seven seed. And what's even worse is that you could easily argue as the Western Conference continues to get better that the, the bar like this is easily the lowest bar to make the playoffs in the Western Conference in probably twenty five years. So it's it's going to get it's going to get tough. Like the the Clippers are not healthy, and the the Pelicans don't have Zion. Hey, so like it's, it's, it's going to get worse. Hey, look to add to your point and why I think like. Again, the John Wall situation is probably the only situation, probably the best situation, right? Is because you could probably go back into this season, run it back with Wall, right? But instead of going with the same core guys that you have with the role players, because again, this free agency class is not crazy. There's no superstar talent unless you're trading for somebody. And I don't think there's anybody right now that's going to be traded unless something crazy happens in the playoffs. What they could do is with their expiring contracts, 
find some role pieces and add to the team, maybe some expiring deals. But try to – if you have a guy like John Wall, and I we don't know how great John Wall is going to be. He might be as bad. But I feel as if, like, if they don't want to trade LeBron James or AD or run it back because maybe you can see what happens with a healthy team, they could probably you know what. Let's retool the roster. Let's go ahead and add the pieces that we actually need to do, add to the team, and probably running it back, but just not with Westbrook. Because personally, we, we, we've made jokes all year where I think Darmo's done it, Mustard has done it, where it's like, you know what? There's 30 other point guards that are better than Westbrook. And if we actually believe that, if you replace Westbrook with another point guard this season, the Lakers probably, I, I most certainly probably make the playoffs, playing tournament at least. So I would assume that they could do that and then maybe going from there. But if there's nothing there, then, yeah, LeBron's going to be wearing a different jersey in August. He ha- he's their only trade piece, bro. No, they have AD. They have AD too. A, but a, but no one's gonna take AD with uh, the way he's injured. Or the AD's first name should be fragile. The man breaks every season. And then People it's gonna still take a risk. Every, on to be fair, it's off season, 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 every season, season, season. Season. say that. Like I'm telling you, some GM is gonna make some. If somebody wants to get AD and make a trade, they'll trade for AD. As much as crazy as that sounds, we didn't think Westbrook was gonna get traded. He got traded. People would trade for AD. People would trade for LeBron just because of the fact that, hey, you know what? Let's bring them to our market, sell tickets. Some GMs think that way. Some owners think that way. Like, you know what? These guys can go ahead and sell us some tickets and bring some people in. But that's yeah. not the main thing. But it's I not, it's not even that crazy, bro, to be honest, um, for the guy combating so hard that AD could feasibly get traded to anywhere. We know Dame, Dame refuses to leave Portland, doesn't want to leave for whatever reason. Portland would 100% be a suitor for AD, considering they're at that level of desperation. 100%. So that that right there would debunk it. And then there's several other teams that at some point would be would be desperate enough to either move forward or backwards. And for the ones that want to move forward, you would take that risk on Anthony Davis. I'm not well, saying you would get equal value for him. He's okay. obviously injury prone. But you would, you would have people that would call. Like, let's not play. Yo, y'all remember those mechanical pencils back in, like, middle school? The lead that used to be inside? That's AD's legs. The e- the way it snapped easy, that's literally his legs. What's also doesn't help about AD is that you look at him, he's he's very low motored. That's that's the biggest issue of Anthony Davis. I understand, yes, he can he goes through phases where he misses a bunch of games. But again, you look at it at the beginning of the year, that low mo- that low motor of his really did suck. He didn't have LeBron, he had Russ, and there was games where he did put up numbers, but Christ's sake, it, he looked like he did it in the most poor way possible. It's like, if he had a better motor, he would, he would, even when he's gone, he would be a really better player. But that's the issue of AD. But that that's something you can't really control. That's just how he is. But push comes to shove, as like the, you look at the Lakers as a whole, they also just need to fleece the old guys. At that point, you need to just – you got rid of Rondo. You need to get rid of – a lot of the other guys that are on one-year deals and kind of look younger. I understand LeBron doesn't like the younger players, and he like he gets rid of the younger players on every team he's been a part of. Doesn't matter if it's Cleveland and Andrew Wiggins. Doesn't matter if it's anybody. If you're he look he looks at young players as oh I can trade you for a guy that in three more years after we get him he'll be old or he won't or we'll lose in value. But it's like that team as a whole. When LeBron, and AD, and Russ were struggling, it made it looked even worse when it came to the retirement home without the rest of the roster, and then including the guys who came in who are supposed to be shooters who can't shoot the damn ball. I mean, like you traded Danny Green, but then you got Wayne Ellington, so it's like, whoa, the difference there. And again, it's like there's certain things that you can do that can about a certain player like Russ or about LeBron or AD, but again, those small guys are going to factor. The other guys that are hanging around are going to factor in as much as the bigger players. Yo, what is, what is going on, bro? What's really going on? I, I, I'm not not to nip what Nick said. I, I hear what you're saying. I, I was thinking bro. that, but I wasn't going to say nothing. No, 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 no. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. No, nah, this, is, this is crazy. Wait, you talking about what Shove's put up or what or, or the timeline right now? No, 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 no. I'm talking it's about space. No, the timeline. The timeline is... Y'all bro, need... listen, listen. Man, Wes, Wes, go get your mans, bro. Listen, if he... <laughs> I think it's crazy. Go get your mans, bro. Like, look, there's no... 
this nigga is not about to sit here and mooch off of this nigga's a clout chaser. He's a professional clout chaser. This nigga wants me to end my space so you, Wes, can host the space so he can sit there and scream about Russ. Fuck out of here. Don't mm-hmm. tell your boy it's street beefs or we ain't talking, bro. Oh, he can join the space or he can see me in street beefs. Like I told him. That's crazy. Hey, look, this, I'm going to say this and then I'm going uh, to step out because I got some shit to do. For Ravion, He's not, he don't want you to end this space. What he really wants wants to happen is after this space, he wants a, a person who he feels like is in the middle to host the space. That's why he asked, like, nominated me. It's wants everybody to jump in and then, um, he you wants know, everybody to jump in so he can seem like the, the victim and try to mooch off the numbers and all that bullshit. Listen, Wes, I gave him this chance before. You know what he did? He used the opportunity to run up the numbers, refused to let me speak, belittled my name, belittled my family, called me all types of disrespectful shit because of oh, something he took that. out of context. He dead ass let all these other random niggas like Mazak and all these other fuck niggas on stage to belittle my name, talk all types of shit about me, all that other type of shit, and he sat there and fucking laughed. He repeatedly fucking belittled my co-host Sage and B-Souls up here about shit that had nothing to do with him, in all honesty, to keep it hot. Yeah, so I, no, I I'm not about to no, go no into a space that, so. after this okay. space to fucking talk to Rayvon. If Rayvon wants to talk to me about whatever the fuck I said about him or Russ, he can join this space. I'll kick every nigga off of here that's not low, souls, you, and fucking um, Sage, and me and him can talk, and it can be neutral. I'll reorganize the host however the fuck he wants to do it, but I gave him a chance to have a fucking a, a, a discussion, a man-to-man discussion. It's fucking Twitter spaces. A man-to-man discussion, and he fucking abused it. So I don't give a fuck what he wants to do. I don't give a fuck what he says he's trying to do. That nigga can kick rocks, see me in Street Beast. I hey, look, can look, 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 bro. I'm going to talk to Ray. We ain't got to be so disrespectful, though. That's I fuck bro, with you. That, I nigga fuck came with up, that nigga had That's my daughter's name in his mouth. Fuck him and his weak-ass football career. It's crazy. He's over here fooling these 10,000-hour niggas with this fake-ass what-was-me football story. Bitch, you failed an algebra <laughs> test, and your ass couldn't play football, nigga. Jesus, stop bro. all this bullshit. No, I'm not about to stop being disrespectful, because that nigga... I give niggas the energy they give me. You want to disrespect me? All these niggas in my fucking DMs disrespecting me? That's fine. You won't get your ass Will Smith, nigga. Fuck is we talking about? <laughs> I'm going to mm. talk to Ray, and we'll, you know, we'll try to reconvene. Y'all, y'all be easy, though. I'll be back. Right, Wes. He is still going. Keep Appreciate it good, you. man. Yeah. Keep it good. Much love, brother love, man. Yo, thanks. legend, sage, domo, thanks for having me up, too, yeah, guys. I got to get good, some stuff man. done, bro. Definitely Appreciate the opinion, everybody. bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's all love, everybody. Yo, salute. I ain't know niggas. I'm about, I'm about to dip. Yo, Lo, thank you. I'm about to say Lo. Yo, I'm, I'm about to oh, dip yeah, as well. Guys. Shut up, because. <laughs> 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 all right, Nick. All right, Nick. All right, Nick. Yo, I just, I, I just, I just got hit to what's, what's being said. I don't know, bro. Some, some of them, some of y'all weird, bro. I can't, I can't fuck with some of y'all. I'm not up at all. I ain't gonna bullshit. Let me just uh, find out. It ain't, it ain't really too much to be here to, but some of y'all niggas is just, I can't, I can't fuck with some of these niggas. Hey, man, let, I, a, I, let I, a neutral host host the space, bro. I can't, I can't. Here, that neutral host being you, bro. All right, bro. You got it. What are we doing, bro? I can't, I can't, I can't. He still got you blocked? Bro, he unblocked me just to fucking. You got my name in your mouth, bro. Let's start a space. Oh That's the first thing he said. So no, no, I'm airing niggas out, bro. I'm tired of being discreet. I'm tired of being a mature party. I'm ready to be immature. <laughs> Fuck what niggas is talking about. This nigga, this is the tweet right here. This is what started this bullshit. He un mind you, he had me blocked. I didn't block this nigga. I don't really block niggas on Twitter for real, for real. This is what's the point? We grown niggas are app. That nigga blocked me. He's had me blocked for like two months now over some Russell Westbrook takes. He unblocks me to say exactly what y'all see up there. That's what he. That's his first tweet to me after unblocking me. Oh, he he questioned Lowe being associated with Omar too, right? Yeah, like bro. Yeah. He questioned yeah. Lowe being associated with me and Omar. Which is he questioned the reason you why being associated with me. Yeah. He questioned yeah. all this shit. He that's questioned crazy. you being a part of a fucking group or business with three black men. It, he questioned all types of shit. This nigga's a fucking clown. And like I told him, I would tell any one of his fucking minions because I see you niggas. Listen, bro. I keep mental notes, bro. I'm, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I have nothing to do for a fruit. I, I get bored easy. I keep mental notes. A lot of you niggas is from Rayvon Spaces. So y'all can run it just like the bitch ass nigga that ran and told Joy, Oh, God, I'm called you a dumbass. Oh my God, he's so disrespectful. And had Joy blowing me up. 
is the same niggas that's gonna run in Rayvon's DMs, and that's probably why he unblocked me. You niggas are clowns. So go tell your messiah that does nothing but rip off Devin Labs 10,000 hour shit from 10 from 10 years ago, by the way. Go tell that nigga he can join this space. We can talk like men. We can it can be cordial. I can have cordial conversations. Or I can hit up street beefs. I'll give him the address. I'll pay this nigga to do it. And we can go on camera and we can throw <laughs> hands, bro. Y'all niggas is done crazy. To this nigga. It is crazy. Street <laughs> beefs are nothing. Y'all niggas in this E beef, bro. I swear. <laughs> this is crazy. Taking <laughs> E beef to street beefs, nigga. What is we Man, doing, bro? Is... <laughs> nah, this is crazy. <laughs> Uh, yo, uh, Clutch, I guess. Clutch, you're booming, and was that? Fuck, bro. <laughs> hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, bro. Yeah. Yeah, what's going on? Um, <clears throat> Rockets fan, by the way. But, um, yeah, that nigga, I was hoping I got a chance to talk to, I forgot what that nigga name was. Um, sure. that nigga, nah, it was a nigga that said, he was arguing with you saying that, if Russ had more shooters around him and more space, that uh, he would perform better. And that that nigga was he was just lying because it's like nigga, watch this nigga on the Rockets. The nigga sucks, bro. Like that's <laughs> that's probably that's probably like my. I enjoyed this season where we won twenty games more than the season when Russ was here, bro. Like that shit is it's stressful. I get it. The nigga shoots dumb shit. Um. We go back to the playoffs where the nigga played, I think, probably like eight, nine games. Negative impact on all, but probably like one. Like, the nigga sucks, bro. <laughs> um, yo, 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 this so is delivery. I what swear it's just the way he's saying it. Bro, bro it's, it's just like, nigga, like, like y'all then already talked about all the Lakers shit. I said from the jump that, nigga, the shit wasn't going to work. Like, it's Russell Westbrook. It's going to be the same nigga. Nigga, they tried to. Woo, LeBron talking about, yeah, I'm going to change. Like, yeah, all right, nigga. Like, that nigga, <laughs> that nigga. And nigga's just up here lying, bro, saying, like, if he was surrounded by shooters. Like, nigga, we had, who, we had Daniel House. Uh, I think he shot 40%. With Eric Gordon streaky. Um, Rocco streaky. Um, James Harden. Nigga, we, we had shooters. Like, and the nigga just still, like, it came to a point where I think Mike D'Antoni in the press, he said, bruh, he was like, I don't even know, like, where to put him, like, like, in the space. Like, I I don't, bruh, the nigga sucks. He sucks. Like, how how do you have all those shooters and you can't, you only get, like, four assists a game? Like, that, that shouldn't happen. Hey, 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 no cap. I ain't, I ain't come up here to stay long. Uh, I'm about to go put the ball in the basket. But listen, the next DTP-esque episode, I'm, I'm serious, we're going to do 35K on it. Bring Rayvon on the pod, bro. Bro, we bring Rayvon on the pod, I'm getting the pod canceled, nigga. I'm using yeah, my I'm about to say, I don't, yeah. I'm getting canceled. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 listen, boy. We'll, we'll I take don't, one I don't. unmonetized episode. Let's do it. I don't speak. I don't speak on bro because I think he's irrelevant to my life. But I'm gonna just say I don't. I don't want to bro on my platform, bro. bro I'm not like, trying bro, to. Why y'all brings, keep talking about this, brings, though, bro? Bro, why? Why? Why do you care, nigga? We're not talking to you. This has nothing to do with you. This has everything to do with the niggas that make money on YouTube doing the fucking podcast. It has nothing to do with you. Shut up. Why are you talking? Damn. <laughs> Yeah, who, who, yeah, I, I don't know, but yeah, I just, I just brought you on. As a matter of fact, for, go for back to waiting, nigga. That, go, go, bitch in my DMs. Yeah, I don't know what's, ha- I don't know what's happened, but like for the shit that's been popping on every, every time I find some e beef on the TL, it nah, I just don't want on my podcast, bro. That's just me, though. We had to talk off. I'm just saying, I don't want to wake up and come on spaces to or wake up over my Twitter to about five DMs saying, "Hey, yo, bro, y'all need to cut my nigga check again, bro." Fuck that. I'm not trying to deal that with that too. shit. That's I'm it. not trying. This nigga really had a whole fucking saga saying we owed him money because yeah. we talked about him for two seconds. But y'all talking about, about him minutes. right now. That's the only thing that I be on y'all. Like, why do y'all? Why? I don't, bro, I don't, like, why y'all get this nigga attention? Nobody, bro. I, bro, I wasn't. That. Listen, listen, Sage. I wasn't gonna say nothing until the nigga added me talking crazy. And I'm like, bro, just come here and talk. Fuck it. It's Bruh. a space. I don't give a fuck about Twitter clout, bro. Nah. It's a space. Cool. 
Oh, yeah. All right, uh, I guess we agree. But regardless, bro, we yeah, can, yeah, we can just lie. keep Giannis. pushing, keep pushing. Yeah, we we um, keep pushing, Omar, bro. Omar, you're you're a nasty one. Yeah, no, um, he's a he's a gross nigga. Yeah, Omar, Omar's that. a nasty. That, that's why whoever spoke <laughs> up, nah, he's a gross nigga. <laughs> yeah, Omar, Omar's a nasty. One. Yo, um, <laughs> I hate this nigga. Uh, Boomin and then to Mazak. Yo, what's up, gang? Gang, what up, what up? what's up, man? Look, I'm not I'm not here to like talk about all the shit you already been talking about, but I just. I'm just tired of like Westbrook being the topic with a NBA Twitter every single damn day. And like, you know, it's always got to be on some bad shit. Like when it's good, bro, it's pretty quiet. But like, you know, I'm a Laker fan. I'm a Russ fan. You know, I'm not, he's, he's had his slumps. He's played good. Majority of it hasn't mattered because his team suck. Otherwise though, look, my, I think Westbrook will be a better player now because of this season. Like, yeah, we kind of give him slack because he does not adjust to um, basically adapt his game and better his game for the betterment of a <clears throat> like, team. Uh, but, like, this might be the final straw. You know, we that could not be true, though, at the same time. And I think, um, you know, over the last course of the season, we've kind of seen glimpses of him just trying to be that player who can play a little bit more off ball. Um, to try. You to still think he's gonna like, change, bro? Control. Wasn't them niggas losing? Yeah, they still losing. But like, that's I said, so what? Are, what are you cutting them slack for? Fifteen games or so. That's kind of. You moment. still think he's gonna change, though? For real, this is like what year twelve, like, year thirteen change. But like, I think he'll be like, look, look, look. I think he'll be better coming into a season with a new team than he did this season, or maybe some of the like than he did with the Houston when he played bad or when with Wizards. Although, you know, some other factors go into that as well. But, you know, I'm not – look, look, I'm not here to make predictions necessarily. I'm just saying, like, from my perspective, he's – like, I feel like he doesn't have a choice at this damn near point. And also, I want to make a thing on the trade. I think – look, 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 Houston yeah, – I doubt he going to Houston, man, just to sit like John Wall. That wouldn't make no sense. I don't think a young team trading for him doesn't make a lot of sense because they got young stars um, that need the ball in their hand. And, you know, I think – Maybe there's a team out there that would take a shot on him. Um, I don't really know who yet. Like I said, I, I made a little list or a little post on it, but it's not really too big of a deal. At the end of the day, though, look, he does have value. He has proved that he is still a solid player. And, you know, at that um, statistically all-star caliber over the last 10, 15 games, right, not really on impact so far because, again, the team is losing. Um, and that's attributed to not only him, it's a to the roster, the coaching, um, and so on and so forth, and injuries. So, yeah, that's kind of my point. <laughs> I I want to be clear. The, the, the reason why we're, we're is this discussion about Russ again, and specifically Russ, is because the quotes that have coming out about the season have been oddly ta- tailored around Westbrook. So I just want to be clear. Like, there's two yeah. or three articles that drop drop within the last 24 hours, and all almost all of them have like very oddly shaped quotes about him. And yeah. I mean, people can do whatever they want to do about it, but for there, for there to be as many hall of famers, different personalities, coaching general managers or executives and things that happen for all of them being written by different people. And I think a lot of these quotes are from various perspectives. It still kind of centers around Westbrook. So I just, I, I want to end, and it seems like I don't think any of them are going to play for the remainder of the season. So I think this is not like a, we coming out of blue with this, like there's quotes claiming that he just refused to to make a, um, he was, he was refusing to make adjustments allegedly at the beginning of the season. Yeah. And like, you know, by far, this is by, again, by far the most backlash he has gotten in this market and playing with LeBron James. And, you know, I don't see how he doesn't hear the noise. And as, kind of Wes said, you know, he, we think of him as this person who's um, strong-minded, you know, he might kind of struggle with those things, you know, because he does have some confidence issues and, you know, there was still some writings on that, that he was in a dark place. And you can kind of see it from the body language, and just his interactions with some of the players on the benches or on the bench and all that. So. All right. Um, all right, man. You know, I think I'm one of the only people, but yeah, I, I am a Russ fan. I've supported Russ his whole career, so my, my, I may be a little biased, but throughout looking at this season, man, I think it's safe to say it's time to run it back with Westbrook. I think if he changes, he we're humans at the end of the day, man. He's a human too, so he can change, man. I think he could develop a jump shot in the off season, man. 
he could develop not a jump shot like a three point jump, just a mid range jump shot. You know what I'm saying? Just so he could come in and be able to shoot the jump shot and be able to hit it off LeBron. But to trade him, man, I don't think that's fair to him. I don't think that's fair to the team. I don't think they get good many trades out around right now. Why is that him. not fair? Why is that not fair to him? It's been ten plus years. What do you mean he can develop now? Uh, I'm obviously, I'm Domo, his control. wife had to been set game, sent death threats, man. Uh, and any of those ten years, bro, I think that the hate's been crazy this year. Well, well, I let's well, let's, uh, let's pause because you're saying his mid range shot. Westbrook has never been like um, a, a great mid range shooter outside of maybe like a year or two. So, what are you saying that he, he's going to start knocking down shots now? I think you've seen we've seen the past like four games before they got eliminated. He's, he's been making those, but he used to brick those off the bank shots. He's, he's starting to make them a bit more. So he's starting to get well, through them. He does that in spurts. Be, but we're not, we're not, we're not talking, I'm not talking, when I'm, when I'm referencing something, I'm not referencing a four game sample size. I'm talking about a the decade worth now. of, no, no, no. I'm talking about a decade. There's not been a, there's not been that many years in Westbrook's career where he's been able to produce enough uh, mid range jumpers at a high volume to justify Anybody giving him another opportunity? Well, you do, you do get a, you do kind of have a point on that. But he just brings it's just man. He, it's, I think it's just gone to his head, man. The whole Lakers shit. He wanted to come to LA to play and for his kids. But I think there's just a lot of uh, situ- what's called a lot of variables that come into this situation. So I think it's not fair to just trade him right now. I think it's fair to give him just one more chance to see what he could do. You know, Even with a better logic, This though, isn't about being. Why fair? do that when he oh, underperforms? Oh, even by your logic of be, of being unfair, I mean, like he's getting made fun of, blah blah blah. Wouldn't that equally make Russ not want to be in L.A.? He quite literally, you're a Russ fan, so I hope you know. Quite literally, said he doesn't care about the fans. He's his well, body yeah. language has been really bad as of late, and it's he doesn't take accountability. Worse. You're you're literally you're literally on. Some Yo, Jay, wait, shut right up, bro. Here. Let me talk to him one on one. Fucking you're, you're, liter- you're literally like trying to be a part-time therapist talking about his mentality and shit. It would, if anything, I would argue it would be fair to get him out of a bad environment. I'd go as far as say the pe- for some reason, New York rumors flared up. I think that's an even worse decision, putting him in a New York market. Yeah, you, know, you just need to, you just need to get, get him out of LA and just let, let Russ be Russ somewhere else, but like exactly, you, you I would agree with you. I would agree with you on that, bro. But at the end of the day, bro, I want my favorite player to want it, to win a championship. I don't want my favorite player just to get bounced off the first round. That's bro. not even you with can... the Lakers. See, you got to. <laughs> the Lakers. But that's I don't. Favorite I don't player is Ben getting bounced out the first round. What are we I doing? I don't think. Bro. I don't think that the Lakers are a situation for him to win a championship. Yeah, and, well, yeah. And, where are you getting and, that? And from? you're and you're and you're arguing that like things are going to change. Like, but what is changing? Again, well, I'm I, saying obviously he has to buy a buy out of his contract. He doesn't have to and try to try to get more cap for the team so they could build around and get better pieces so it works better. But that that's the that has to be part of it. Russell Westbrook is like, giving what are the odds that he does that? Yeah. yeah, what are you saying? You're just, you're just Mad, saying literally, he's things. LA, bro. You're acting like he doesn't have his whole life. He wants to live in LA. He grew up in LA. No. He wants to no. his whole life. You're, are you playing 2K? I, I, I'm what? like, like what, Yo, what's up, bro? Your, <laughs> like he lives in LA, y'all act like he he lives in LA, bro. He doesn't want to go. Do, what you want? You want him to get traded to Orlando, bro? He don't He's live. There. No, but, but he doesn't. He doesn't. Um, but that's not how this works. He doesn't really have a choice. He he, he just got done playing in DC. So I mean, I, he doesn't really have a choice. I would argue if 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 what would be best for him wouldn't be a team that may struggle, continue consistently struggle with floor spacing, especially not um, on ball defense to allow him to be a better. Um, passing lane defender and again like this we have to stop with this like he can go back to the mid-range shooter he was like Westbrook hasn't been like a clearly above 40 percent shooter from mid since like 2014 like he like he's he he has been like Westbrook this year is, is finishing the season shooting 38 percent from mid last year's last year you know he shot from mid 38 percent like he's been, he's been sh- great. that's yeah, he's the main been, point my but main he, point is obviously he didn't shoot great, and you guys are bringing up main points. He did play shit this season. I'm not saying he played a good season. It's been a disappointing season. But to just mad, we let's say trade him where you, there's no no one wants him, bro. Like you, there's there's not a lot of teams on the market, and you don't want to get him angry to be like you know what fuck I'm a buy in, and then he buys in, and then there's no one who's gonna trade him. No one's gonna trade for him. He's bro. gonna buy in regardless. That's yeah. That's he, he go buy out if we treat him like nicely. If, he, if us fans respect him and treat him nicely, he will buy out and give it one more run. I feel like it's a much better buy out. But, 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 but what is that? What is buying out? What does buying out do though? 
make it. We could we could sign him on a veterans minimum and then get more cap to build around sign and get better pieces. Sign on a veteran minimum. Yeah. Bro, I'm no, trying to find it. Well, it's better than trading him. Who are you going to trade but, him for? But, but, here, but well, I want to I want to be clear. A fax machine even, like Kyle Corver. That's what we're trading even, for. Even, even, even when you're saying buy him out, let's say, let's say hypothetically speaking, Westbrook turns down $47 million and instead he comes back for $10 million. Let's just say that. Yeah. The Lakers are still going to be committed to $110 million next year. They don't have cap space. Even if they get rid of him, even if he just walks, let's say hypothetically speaking, they get nothing for him. They still have already committed over $100 million to the team next year. They don't have cap flexibility. That, y'all keep, I don't understand what y'all don't understand about that. They do not have cap flexibility. The way that you would make this work is to use the, the cap leverage that you have in your favor – and flip the forty-seven million for more players. You don't just let him walk or just have him sign for less because you you end up um, handicapping yourself regardless. That's not how the salary cap works. All right, then I guess in that point you could trade him. But the end, you guys aren't going to get the Lakers the fan base won't get any better, bro. We all are still still no I matter agree. what you get. I from. agree. Like this, yeah, this, yeah, this we Domo agree. dude See, just you're, said you're Kyle Culver. Like... I know we I know you agree with me. Like this dude just said Kyle Culver for straight face. So when the, when you see. Okay, so you was one of them goofy ass niggas that just hear something and then just run off without knowing what the niggas are saying. I said, you asked, what we, let me say it slow because I know you're slow. What would you, what do you think you get? What kind of package do you want for Westbrook? We're saying anything. I said a Cal Corver package, which I don't know when you started watching basketball, Mazak. But us who actually been watching basketball for a minute know Cal Corver was traded for a fax machine. Well, cash that went towards the fax machine. But the joke is he was traded for a fax machine back when he was younger. So I'm saying, Mazak, I will take anything, even a Cal Corver deal, trading him for a fax machine. Do, did it make sense, Mazak? Yeah, thanks for. I'm pretty slow, so thanks for pronouncing it slowly for me. Fuck. Oh, hey, hell you no, got man. It, you got it, anyway, let's go back to the point is, bro. What I'm trying to say is that there's no, you guys aren't going to get any better no matter what you do. But if you get Russ, I think you guys get a little, you guys might get a little bit better. We got so Russ and got worse, bro. When we yeah, get Russ, we get better. Bro, Don't worry, you're just a hating ass dude, but you've been on. Okay, so listen, I get it. You're used to hearing me on spaces called Russell Loser, but let's talk facts. KCP, Kyle Kuzma, those guys. That Laker team with Montrezl Harrell and Dennis Schroeder, that team of just genuine role players and starters, accumulated more wins than this Laker team where Russ did not miss a significant amount of time. LeBron didn't miss a significant amount of time. Only AD did. So if you're telling me a team without AD and LeBron got more wins and got us to the playoffs and played better as a team than a team with Russell Westbrook and LeBron, if that's not a bad look on him, if we did it literally, statistically, like look at the numbers. The Lakers lost nine. We we have nine fewer wins than we did last season at this point. We got worse with Westbrook. It's not being a hater. It's being factually correct. Stop being blind by bias. Listen, I don't like the ball-headed men as Michael Jordan, but goddamn, some context is just true. Like facts are facts. Learn a fact from an opinion just because you've got your knee pads on. Slurp, slurp, gobble, gobble on Westbrook, bro. Oh my Calm God, down. Christ. Yo, you're Jesus. gross. Man, man, you know what's funny? Before you unmute him, bro, it, his whole thing, it started with just like, keep Russ, bro. Like, he, he can make up for it. Then it went to, then, then it went to, well, I mean, shit. If you, if you get rid of Russ, you're going to suck anyway. Then he made him sound like a burden. And now we are where we are, man. I ain't gonna lie, bro. This this is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah, hey, man, bro, I guess, bro I guess you have out, out argued my argument with the keep Russ. And I don't want to hear from a fucking Rockets fan, so stay on mute. So when I was so well, at the end of the day pussy. at the end of the day, bro, you guys bring up good points. I'm trying to find a way to defend my player, but it's just getting less and less at this point. Stop trying to defend a nigga that doesn't need to be defended. That's the problem. You're trying Talk to defend to him. him for no reason. Bro, the like, whole, there's no the reason whole, to defend him. Is against him, bro. There's, you stand with your reason. player, bro, no matter bro. what, bro. That's how you're supposed to be raised, bro. You stand with him no matter what. What are you trying to say? Don't Who stand raised what? you to stand with No, you're not. What? Who raised you to stand with No, you're trolling. You're trolling. You're trolling. You're trolling. He's trolling. He's trolling. But here's the thing, bro. And this is something that... No, you're trolling, nigga. I ain't gonna lie. I've, I've, I'm talking about this in um an uh, upcoming vid. Even like the fact that people feel for whatever reason that these players 
really care about you going to random videos, spaces, streams, whatever, whatever platform and just blindly following them for no reason, despite the fact that there's obvious criti- criticisms to any level, e- even Russ's level, but to any level is ridiculous. They do not care. They just do not care. You you can have your own opinion. You don't have to be a minion, bro. I didn't mean to rhyme. But, like, bro, tighten up, bro. Hey, so, um, like, he said give Russ time. How much time do niggas really got? <laughs> like, you feel me? I know you said develop a jump shot like, in the summer. Like, this... This nigga Russ had 10 plus summers to get a fucking jump shot. I still ain't got one. I don't want to hear that fucking, oh, he can still change shit, bro. Nah, I, said is, he was, I said he was trolling when he said get the jump shot. But I was that nigga said, not that nigga said in the summer. Bro. Isn't he supposed to be a veteran? Just wondering. You guys could drop me down. Maybe he doesn't have to shoot better, right. but he can adapt better. You know what I mean? Just from the start. Well, shit. Uh, Honestly, in my opinion, I feel like they wasted a year of LeBron's talent. Russ has just been a disappointment, a big as in the the starts by Frank Vogel, the placements like DJ, trash, no hands, trash. He's old, no hands. In my opinion, Dwight, he's just an old side of thirty. I don't, I don't like it. It it, it makes me feel bad watching Dwight play sometimes. But overall, Russ just he just they just need to ship him and find better pieces. I honestly, John Wall. I thought about it. I don't know. He's an injury-prone guy. Yeah, I just feel like they just need to find something else, something decent at least. Russ is just ain't it. He just ain't it. Bro, I am not trying to trade Russell Westbrook for John Wall, bro. I don't know why so many <laughs> niggas keep spewing this rhetoric. No, no one I wants John Wall, bro. Player, bro. I never said we had to It's not it. happening, bro. No, no, no. I'm not saying you're saying it, but you're not the first person to bring up John Wall's name, especially this fucking season. Listen, the only time I wanted John Wall is when it was reports that Christian Wood's name was attached to the trade. That was the only time I was like, well, goddamn, give me Wall. But other than that, bro, no one wants him. That's why he's rotting on the bench throwing gang signs up in street clothes. The nigga's not on the court for a reason. No one wants him. No one went out to get him. No one's seeking his talents right now. The nigga is where he's supposed to be, at home in strip clubs with James Harden. That, that's it. But um, let, let's go ahead and move to the next. Um, I ain't going to lie. Was y'all paying attention to these hands? I really wasn't. I, my phone is blowing up. I wasn't by the law of the spaces. The, uh, David, I don't know what the rest of his name is. He didn't go start it off. Hey, what's I'm, up, guys? Can you hear me? I'm damn near. Um, I'm trying to make this video while niggas are talk blasphemous in my ear. Um, <laughs> talk facts. I guess shit. um, my my Kyle Higgins, and then we'll just go from there. Yo, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you good. Um, yeah. So um, I'm a Lakers fan, man, and um, all you fucking rust stands. Y'all, are, y'all just on her capping. That nigga's been ass all year. He can't shoot free throws. How you a point guard that can't fucking shoot free throws? He can't bank in his shots off the fucking glass. Stop shooting them off the glass. The nigga pulling up on a fast break with, and losing the fucking ball going one on four. He's shooting air balls. He has no fucking IQ. No IQ. Russ is too fast for his body. He can't think. He's retarded. I'm sorry to tell y'all that. The man can't shoot, has no IQ, can't play defense. The number one point guard can't have IQ, can't ha- play no defense, and he can't shoot the fucking ball, and he can- he's unplayable in the fourth quarter. Y'all need to get through, y- through y'all's fucking head. I don't know what we're going to do. We don't want fucking John Wall, so stop saying we want John Wall. We don't want fucking John Wall. Same exact fucking player. I wanted John Wall four years ago. We don't want John Wall. Rice and keep that nigga. We do not want Russell Westbrook. He's off the fucking team. He is ass. He cost us this year. And then he came to L.A. We don't give a fuck about stats. We don't care about triple doubles. We hang championship banners. He care about these fucking stats. We don't care about his stats. Y'all want to dick ride his triple doubles. Y'all want to dick ride when he get 10 assists, only three turnovers every fucking 20 games. We don't care about that shit. We hang in championship banners. That's all we give a fuck about. Not about these fucking stats. The niggas is ass. He can't take the pressure. And then he try to say, they call me Westbrook, hurting my family's name. No, he wants sympathy. The nigga's ass. No sympathy. Your ass. And that's all I got to say. Uh, y'all can drop me down now. Uh, 
Um, um, he'll go to. Well, we already heard from Clutch. We heard from. I don't know if David went, but I feel like we heard from David. Uh, Kino. What's good, y'all? I just want to say, first of all, there was a. Uh, there was, y'all can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah, I want to say there was uh, someone who was like, yo, I don't want to hear from no Rockets fan. I think it was Mazak. I'm just trying to say, bro, that's like one of the problems. Like, we just here to talk basketball, man. Like, y'all be making it seem like these players are a part of your lives. Like, Basketball is something we love, but you can be invested in that shit. But you can't be, like, trying to defend players to the point where you disrespecting other people because it's not that serious. And I want to say, like, what Mazak said, too. I'm not trying to come at him or nothing. But what he said kind of exactly points out what Lowe was talking about because he was like, yeah, you got to buy out Russ and then you got to bring him back. It's like, bro, after – that's what he was talking about with the always having to cater to Russ thing. After a season where he was ass, you want them to buy him out, give him forty million, and then bring him back after he obviously doesn't fit with the team. You want them to continue to adjust to him, even though there's reports he doesn't want to adjust to the team. And it just doesn't make sense. And I'm a Wizards fan, so I got experience with Russ fans. And the tone of while he was here and after he left was totally different, bro. Because you leave, and then everyone's like, oh, look back at Wizards Russ. He was different. Everyone who wants to defend Russ this season, they talk about Wizards Russ. They talk about MVP Russ. And I hate when they talk about Wizards Russ because Wizards Russ is overrated. And that's not even me saying I didn't appreciate him while he was here. Him and Beal had some great-ass moments. But in the playoffs, he was ass. But then you talk to a Russ fan. He had 19, 13, 13. But dude shot like 33% from the field. But then you say that, you don't know ball. End of end of discussion. Or you're a hater. And I remember TSO TSO stream a few days ago. It's like, how do you fucking, like, that's not a conversation. Like, niggas love basketball. They love these players so much, but they don't want to have conversations about them. And then you love a player so much, but you can't hold them accountable. It don't make sense. It doesn't at all. And it's just like, do you love basketball? That, it feels like they love these players more than they love basketball itself. And it's like, what's the point? That's just what I wanted to say. I don't get what the point of that is. Like, you want to defend Russ to the point where you're not even talking about basketball no more. You're just dick riding blatantly. And the niggas will bring up stats, but then the same niggas will be like, Jokic, be talking about Jokic, and will be talking about, oh, they only use advanced stats. It's like, bro, you don't need advanced stats to understand that Jokic is great. Bro. Like, people will be trying to leave Jokic in your... Like, if you watch basketball, it's obvious. Like, you don't need stats all the time. People, there was this one guy I was talking to. He was like, how can you say Russ was horrible? He was averaging 18, 7, and 7. And then nigga said objectively. And I was like, if you're saying it non-objectively, if you use context and you watch basketball and you look at efficiency, turnovers, and everything outside of 18, 7, 7, the nigga was bad. You can't go and look at, oh, December, he was this. Okay, when he wasn't averaging five turnovers, he still wasn't shooting well from free throws. And then niggas want to be like, oh, but that's a mental aspect. But And I watch, like, fucking podcasts. I don't want to talk for too long. But I watch podcasts with KD. You like you can see these sides of players, and in reality, you don't know what the niggas is thinking. Someone can be like, oh, Russ is, Russ is struggling at the free throw line because – the mental aspect, the the his uh his uh free throw routine is off. It's like, bro, you don't know who Russ is. Like, that's the reason you're assuming. But have you talked to Russ and he's been like, yeah, dog, I'm struggling with free throws because, you know, my foot's behind the line. I don't feel right. It's like, no, nigga, you don't know these niggas. Like, like, like y'all be saying, they they they're getting paid to play basketball. This, um, Mazak was talking about. Oh, he lives in L.A. You can't take him away from his family. It's like, bro, he's getting paid. He's in the NBA. It's his job. Just like it's these niggas' jobs to make YouTube videos. It's their job. Like, And we out here talking about it, trying to dick suck them. Like, bro, it feels like it's all about, it's not even about the love of basketball no more. I genuinely don't. It feels like niggas get caught, caught up so much in trying to be right, trying to have their opinions. And it's like, and through the Wire podcast, you hear that um, Kenny talked about it. He's like, no one who talks about ball is right 100% of the times. But it feels like every person on Twitter, that's their goal. They want to be right 100% of the time. It's like, bro. You can't. That's literally not possible. And if that's the case, you can't dick ride takes because then it's not even your take at that point. Like, 
you can't just enjoy the game and let shit happen naturally. Niggas want to dick ride Russ, even though he's obviously playing bad, just because they don't want to hear the fair player get shit on. But that's all I want to say. Yeah. I don't want to take up too much time. All right. Um, hey, yo. Oh, no, it's, it's an order. It's an order, brother. Put, just sorry, put your man. hand up and then we'll, we'll go. Unless you got just a quick comment or something like that. Oh, no, I, I'll wait. It's, it's all, all right. Uh, Isaiah, and then we go to David. Hi, right, hello. Yeah. All right, so how y'all doing? Um, so first thing I want to say, uh, no more. I love the title. Rest is the reason because the other day I actually was in a other Twitter space and it's a bunch of Russ fans. They're talking, and the title was Russ isn't the problem. So when I first, I'm like, okay, what's going on? Twelve people just dick riding Russ, talking about these last six games. Y'all see why? He's not the person to blame, this, that, and that. And I'm just – so I joined up, and I gave a very similar take of what I've heard a lot of people saying, talking about them keeping Russ and them getting rid of previous players, such as, like, Caruso, KCP, Kuzma. I basically said that. I was like, how are y'all going to – like, you you look – my fault. But how are y'all going to be like, oh, Russ isn't the problem, Russ isn't that – and then when somebody comes up with an accurate take, like, you got rid of all your defenders, like, Russ isn't that good, they booted me. They booted me immediately. A bunch of Russ fans booted me. So I'm just here to say I love the title. That's one. Two, people need to stop with this Russ Westbrook is going to gain a jump shot. Bro, I've been watching Russ for 10 years. His whole career. It's been too long. He's only getting older. He will only continue to get older. And with that, his athleticism is going down since his increase on the Rockets. So... Russ, over time, is just like, why would you even, the guy Zach was talking, why would you even buy Russ out? You you already seen it failed this year. It seems like people just, Russ fans just want to go through the same stuff over and over. I feel like it's just, it's time to pack him up. It's time to pack up, yeah, basically the Lakers. Like, all y'all were saying, just pack them up, bro. Facts, 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 facts. Uh, David. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, we can. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the fact that we got, like, Westbrook over, like, the Rosen is, is, is mad. I just, I, I don't even fucking know how, like, that whole shit, like, it's LeBron's fault, bro. I, I, I just think it's LeBron's fault. Like, this, jeez. I don't, I, bro, I, I'm not even... Bro, <laughs> what did LeBron do? LeBron, what, did LeBron LeBron do? what are you What are you saying? Because you're not saying anything right now. <laughs> What's going on? Like a <clears throat> legend. We watched the video of Magic Johnson say, "Like the reason why Russ is on the team is because of LeBron, right?" Well, I guess, but all right. Well, go ahead. Finish what you're about to say. Let me hear. Let me hear what you're about to say. Russ has never been good in his, his career. Like he's he's always <laughs> like he never he never. <laughs> I'm dead serious, bro. Like, he's never had a jump shot. He's never, like, doing shit. Like, he, he, it's only stat padding. Like, the fact that we got yeah. Westbrook over DeRozan, like, is, like, to me, it just hurts, bro. Like, we, bro, bro it's fucking, it's, it's LeBron's fault, bro. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's, it's LeBron's fault. <laughs> That's what I think. I I, I, I would <laughs> probably not agree with that because I mean, yeah. Why? Westbrook, he's, I mean, he's a grown ass man. Westbrook is on the court. He also agreed to be there. The organization well, like, he, also agreed wait, to wait, trade hold him. Hold up. He he's never like been a like good player in like he he's just a stat pad, bro. He, he he's just stat stat pads. Like he he doesn't fucking. <laughs> like, but even even if you even if you believe that that is something that will apply to Westbrook regardless of the team that he goes to. So by that metric, then you're you still would have to put blame on Westbrook for playing basketball like that. Okay, yeah, and then, okay. and then if you would and then you wouldn't even put uh, LeBron as the primary one. Rob has to pull the trigger two to mm-hmm. go a hundred percent off of the first take. Magic Johnson segment is crazy in itself. Because they've Why? been playing, they've been playing telephone with that story ever since it, it even broke out. Like, like, like it's on some girly shit. Like, we, we don't know what exactly happened, and I don't care what exactly happened. What I do know is that Rob Palenka pulled that trigger. 
you don't have to pull the trigger on on something considering you're a literal season removed from championships level success. And then the following season, the season in between, your your squad got hurt. You don't even know what could have happened. So it is it, it's it's stupidity on a lot of people's part to just say a hundred percent LeBron is at fault. Even if you want to give him some fault, but it it's he's not the main culprit in this situation, man. No, yeah, Russell Westbrook has is, is been like ass the whole season, man. I, I, I ne- like I've been watching Russ for like ten years, and he's he's pretty much been like the same player. He's never like changed. Like I, like I don't know this triple double shit. Like it's pretty much just him being on a bad team, and that's what he's like afforded to do. Like he's just doing that because he's on those like trash teams. Not he's not a, he's never been a player that like could take you to the next level or like like bro I, I don't know what they saw in him that was like oh yeah hey, let's get Russ and like we gonna win the championship and some shit like I don't I honestly don't know what the fuck they saw like I don't know man it's just the fact that we we, we got like the Rosen like bro like it's bro it's it's it pissing me the fuck off bro like we Probably ain't even going playing on. Hey man, I guarantee in the offseason you weren't saying DeRozan would have been your favorite pick of being that. Also, Layella, can we can we can we address that as well? Y'all y'all have to just start thinking for yourselves. First of all, Magic Johnson has been proving he's a, a bad um GM as well, or at least has really bad tendencies. Uh-huh. And um having what's we're gonna I mean having um DeRozan on the team really wouldn't change anything outside of just more mid range shots being made. But that that doesn't yeah. mean like the defense is gonna still be bad. The, the lack of floor spacing is still going to be bad. Having a player on the team that needs the ball in his hands is still going to be present. Like, all those things still exist. It's it just that it may seem like it may work because DeMar is having an amazing season this year. But the reality is, is that, like, that would have been the, – the truth of the matter is that that those problems or the play that we're seeing from DeMar would not have been seen on the Lakers, and they still would have been struggling immensely. And God knows – Do you think that – wait, off. hold up. Hold up, wait, uh, hold up. Do you think – we would have made like the playoffs with the Rosen. I think I think we might make the the playoffs, but I don't think I think you will be a first round exit. Yeah, I'm about to say I would challenge <laughs> anybody. I would challenge anybody who is like my bro right here going about Demar Derozan being signed. Let's say we make the first round of the playoffs. Let's say we at an eight. Let's say we make a top six seed even. So we didn't even do go through the plan. That okay. wasn't the bar that we had coming into the season in the slightest. Everybody was talking about championships, 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 as expected. And as rightfully, you should you should expect that, considering you have LeBron, AD, and other players on the team. But consider, like, to, to make a whole hissy fit about DeMar going there just to acknowledge that the team had no shot at winning the title regardless, I feel like it was a waste of breath at that point. But I don't know. Okay. I bet. All right, um, Kobe, and then go to T. If you if you want to, because I know some of y'all in here, I don't know if y'all want to speak or not. Yeah, thanks. Y'all trying to speak, put your hand. hands up so we know. You got to put it, because I'm trying to keep, yeah, trying to keep. Because yeah, shit yeah. gets chaotic quick. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kobe uh, been trying, but I think he just didn't know how to put his hand up. Because yeah, I saw him yeah, No, I had it on request for a minute, though, but yeah. Dog, oh, man. This shit is all. The only reason I place it all on Westbrook because he was supposed to be the missing piece. I don't know why they thought he would have been, but he was supposed to have been the missing piece. So we gave up everything for Westbrook, and he was supposed to be the missing piece to help us win a championship or take responsibility off of LeBron. And he completely failed in every way. He completely failed. So it has to be Westbrook is a problem. Even if, okay, you can say the coach, you know, okay, okay, all right. Great, Vogue is not a great coach, but he was a great coach a couple years ago when he won the championship. Okay, I mean, the roster is not as good. Put that on, put some of that on Rob. You can put that on LeBron. But then you go back to Westbrook again because we gave up everything for you, and you don't even play at an all-star level. You play, you're not even a starting point guard, really. I mean, okay, the numbers, the numbers look good, but when you look at the game, low IQ, bad, bad turnovers, terrible shooting for a point guard. You got to at least be a decent shooter as a point guard. So you have all these negatives 
what positives do you have? Terrible defense too. Lazy defense. Gambling, low IQ defense. Wandering around. Um, just just bad defense at that too. So, so we basically gave up everything for nothing, for you to do nothing, and we missed the playoffs. Okay, Westbrook missed one game, two games this year. I understand LeBron. He 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 he's been in and out. AD's been injured. I understand the injuries, but man, we we still should have been a play-in team. Seven from that seven to ten range. Well, yeah. Minnesota got 45, 46 wins, something like that. Well, okay, maybe we should be maybe where the Clippers are. They're like a game under five hundred. We should have won at least 30, 40, 38, 35 to forty games this year and been in that play-in situation. So there's no excuses, and it's all on Westbrook, man. Yeah. The only coach, reason uh, I will place blame on LeBron is because he, he he signed off on this. That's the only reason I will place blame on LeBron. But this shit's all on that nigga Westbrook, man. Yeah, Kobe, man, we had forty different starting lineups. The the only thing that <laughs> the only thing about what he said that was truly like, like uh, for the most part, it's not even like I totally disagree with you, bro. But the only thing is. When you say missing piece, I would honestly argue that's the Lakers culture's own delusion being a problem than it is for us. When know when why you when you talk about a missing piece, like Yeah, yeah. When you talk about a missing piece, always acquiring stars over depth and shit like that. I don't know I don't know what it is with the Lakers fans. And I, I've been one, so I really don't understand it because I've never moved like this necessarily. But the the fascination of always getting the star, figuring it out, having blind privilege, thinking anybody will sign to you for whatever contract just because you're the Lakers. It is, is, I would argue that the way you phrased it, I would argue that would mean that you should hypothetically think their uh, Lakers delusion was the biggest problem. But but I know I'm just nitpicking that. But majority of what you said, I don't really, really disagree with. Hey, man. Um, yeah, it's like, it's crazy, though, too. It's like, man. Hey, man. Okay, look- even if everybody was healthy, I would say – you would say the Lakers should have won 50 games with every 80. You know, 80 not going to play 70 games. So let's say 80 and LeBron play 60 to 65 games. At the Lakers' peak, that should be a 45 50 win team. No, no, that's I, true. That's true. At um, their peak, even if you don't, I didn't, I never believed they was going to win the championship because Westbrook, I thought they would have a great regular season, 50 wins maybe, I mean, 55 maybe. I thought they would be a great regular season team and then they would flame out in the playoffs because Westbrook would be exposed. For the low IQ, out of erratic player that he is, I thought with this, with this is just bad. With this shit happened, Westbrook got to go, man. This nigga can't stay on this team. It's not gonna work. Like I don't know what they do to my develop a jump shot. Westbrook's played fourteen fucking years. He's not developing a jump shot, and they're leaving this nigga wide open. It's not like this nigga is being contested. They're not even trying to guard you. So how the fuck you gonna develop a jump shot? Like, but that's I all I was gonna say though. But um, I'm chime hey, in yeah. once in a while, y'all, y'all, y'all get y'all space back. But I wasn't crazy. Not for hey, sure. TSO. Uh, what's up? What's up? You know, uh, well, like you probably know this. I'll be real quick, but you know, like the reason why we basically got a, I guess, a third star, and you know, obviously it was to me the Brooklyn Nets kind of building that trio, and what kind of scared them, and then maybe an underrated part of it, which I haven't heard too much, is, is the fact that LeBron really wants a narrative, man. He wants just a storybook ending, and that's kind of how I've been seeing it this season, and it just fell apart he tried to save it a few times with you know the tweet saying we'll we'll be better like keep talking about my team uh we're gonna show you all that and it 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 just lebron in la just has to be a narrative it seems to me and he's not considerably analyzing the basketball part of it but that's yeah but nobody expected him to be this bad though that's all that's the only thing i really yeah so bad like hey but everyone expected them to be great you know um, coming into the season, that, that is a fact for the most part. I mean, whether it's Bleacher Reports, ESPN, I mean, there's a period of time Vegas had him to be in the uh, the favorite to go to the finals versus the Nets, and you know that's obviously collapsed. So, bro, to see, think this will work is so delusional. Like to think this will work is so delusional, bro. Like you should be able to tell based off a of nigga's careers previously that this was a fucking shit, gonna be a shit show. Um, they still should have got like fucking forty five to fifty wins, but playoffs for sure was going to be trash. This nigga Westbrook is clearly the problem. He he fucking handicapped the whole roster just to come and play fucking terrible and literally piss down his leg. 
the whole fucking season. That's the thing about Russell Westbrook. He blinded the whole league at a time. Everybody just saw that nigga as somebody that just did the outstanding shit. You I just got to really quit looking it. at stats, fam. I nah, bro. I believe this nigga working for Vegas, bro. There's no way, bro. This nigga was bad. <laughs> that nigga working for the mob or some shit. <laughs> that nigga shaving points. He doing something. He had to have been shaving points, bro. I know that's crazy to say, but that nigga had to have been, man. The type of shit he was doing. He got like kindergarten turnovers, bro. Just coming bro, down. Bro, he's just always done that, though. Throwing it to the team. He's like, always had it. No IQ. Kindergarten turnovers. Uh, playing too fast for fucking anybody. He's always done that. I don't yeah, understand I've no, how I've, niggas I've, come I've, into this season expecting some miraculous turnaround from this nigga. Like, he ain't always been a turnover-prone, bad shooting, no defense, playing nice nigga. Has he not? But the whole thing is, again, I lied to myself about what Westbrook could be. I figured if there was any, if there was any time to make a mental adjustment and to defer and to play a different role, not even change your game, but play a different role on the team, a la James Harden on the Nets playing more of a playmaker role for Kyrie and, and Kevin Durant. For Golly West Westbrook, who people say is this great playmaker, for Golly West Westbrook, who say this guy's this great point guard, I feel like those are reasonable expectations. I knew coming in, if Russ was not playmaking or a primary playmaker or a guy to relieve playmaking duties from LeBron and just let LeBron and AD score, we were going to struggle, and that's exactly what happened. LeBron had to do a lot more playmaking than Russ because Russ still turned the ball over. He still made bad decisions. Now that's, Russ is now, not a natural. If, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Russ, hey, that's the problem. Russ, Russ is not a natural playmaker. It just always makes it look like that because – He's the fucking rock. He's always been the fucking roster post KD. I feel yeah, that, but coming out of Bale. college, he coming out of college, he came off the bench. Coming out of college, he was a shooting guard. Then he transitioned to point guard. You've had ten plus years in the NBA to develop being a point guard. You've made All Star teams. You won an MVP. You you made All Team NBA's playing point guard as a point guard. You're a top seventy five player all time as a point guard. So there's no excuse. You are you should exactly. be held to those expectations. Exactly. Oh, I'm not giving don't act like he don't have any type of point guard abilities. He does. It's just not that he does. his IQ is so low that that it's like it's like sixty. It's like seven. It's like sixty percent bad, and like he has like forty percent good uh, passing, and it's like his IQ is just too low for that shit. And but honestly, he's not. He wasn't even great in transition. He was like doing crazy turnovers in transition. Isn't he supposed to be great in transition? I mean, damn, I understand in a half court situation, but damn, he was so bad in transition. That probably that's a huge takeaway from the season too, because uh transition was they were supposed to be crazy in transition, at least with the front line type shit. But that nigga is god has been god awful in transition, half court interviews, during timeouts, <laughs> you name it. I think you're working for nigga, Vegas, bro. Like, that nigga has been god awful with any aspect of fucking basketball, working- whether it's fucking post game antics with dumbass uh, quotes on interviews, talking about what was your expectation and shit. Like, nigga, get real. Niggas expected niggas to win a championship when you got three great players, nigga. What do you mean? What, what was your expectations for the season, nigga? You're making a fool out of yourself. I feel like he should have just said, my bad on my play. He should have went to a press conference and at least said that. Just show accountability. And just, like, I feel like he should have just did that. Instead of just accusing them, firing back at them, he should have just been accountable. Simple as that. Like you said, isn't he on the NBA 7015? Simple as that. That's a fact. Hey, um, we're going to go with T, then we're going to go Don, and then Afro. Yo, yo, yo. I, I I agree that Westbrook is to blame, but my only issue with this entire um, Lakers team is like they played him in the bubble and they literally they literally left him, like left him in the playoffs, like completely left him. So like I don't know what more of a role switch or what more they were expecting out of Westbrook. So it, it just it just boggles me that like Westbrook's been the same player his entire career. His entire career. I just don't know what the Lakers were expecting out of that Westbrook trade. And the the, the the way they leveraged their whole future for a person with a $45 million player option is insane. So I, I think Westbrook is to blame because he played like absolute dog shit. But I also think Frank Vogel's to blame. 
I also think if it is true that LeBron had a hand select picking and that I think I don't even think it would be more LeBron's fault. I think that makes it even more Frank Vogel's fault because as a GM or as a coach, you're supposed to tell your players what to do. You're supposed to do the best roster for your team and not just go off of what the player says. Uh, um, am I the only person you just went out for? Yeah, I thought, I thought like, I'm, I'm doing something, but I didn't. Yeah, we I went, went out for me, too. Yeah, I, I went out. Too. Yeah, you, you, you kind of cut out towards the tail end, but you kind of got the gist of what you were saying, my brother. Yeah, no bullshit. I just, um, like, I just don't know what they were expecting with Rushbrook. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, like, I don't know what they were expecting. Expecting like, to change. That That's what, that, that's what they were expecting. But, that's but delusional, like Damo, though. Damo, that's not delusional, little... though. That's, that's no, no, not I, delusional. Damo, I, I find it delusional on the, the the respect of the Lakers to think a player that hasn't changed throughout his career is going to change magically and is what? What season is Russell Russell Russ breaking this year? Like, um, too damn it, it, uh, far enough to know that if you have a chance to win a championship playing with LeBron and AD, you should defer. We, if, we, if we're delusional for thinking that he will be a mature adult and professional, then damn, I don't know what the bar is to be an NBA player. But, like, I, I feel like even when he was with Harden or when he was with KD, he still showed the ability to not defer in certain situations. So I don't, I still don't know what, like, what – I feel it is delusional. I feel like it is delusional to, to try to change that man and his entire way of play style. It is, you bro. Can't, I, I think it's delusional, bro. Like I, I, like, I honestly believe it's just delusion. Changes play style to use his physical was, traits was, and his was, physical was, gifts. Style, but hold on, listen. Changes his play style on being a dominant on ball guy that gets the board and then pushes up the court to now anyone can get it and you use your athletic system to run the break, run your lanes and get easy transition buckets. Something we did before, something Kuzma actually highlighted and did perfectly. Kuzma will always get fast break buckets all the time. That's why I miss Kuz. And that's why, I'm, even though I was so mad we traded Lonzo instead of Kuz, now I'm mad we traded Kuz because now I'm stuck with fucking Westbrook. So, yes, it, it, you do need to change your game if you want to win, if you haven't won. If we're having this conversation about Westbrook and he's had a Stephen Curry career, maybe we take a step back and be like, all right, maybe this nigga just knows what he's talking about. But we're talking about a nigga with the same success rate as Damian Lillard. A but same success rate as Melo. A same yeah. success rate as Charles Barkley. A same success rate as Carmelo. I mean, Carl Malone and John Stockton in terms of winning championships. But so Dombo. when you're on that list of guys that haven't won and you still have yet to do it and you desire to do it, you sacrifice. You change your game. That's what you do. It's a part of the game. Dumbo, my point. But my it's point. Russ at the same time. Yeah, but that's my point. It's lit. It's Russ. That's Westbrook. why he's a loser. Which is why I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not that's arguing what we're that saying. point. I'm not arguing that point, Dumbo. I'm not one of these people out here defending Westbrook like he did. He's absolved from all wrong. My point is that I think the Lakers fans, all the ones when I said, "Oh, how the hell is that going to work?" They're like, "No, nah, we got the chip. This down and third, we're better than the Suns. This down and third." I think y'all all were delusional. I think the front office was delusional. I think LeBron was delusional. I think all the niggas was delusional. Yeah, I wasn't saying uh, as far as his pros. I'm talking about his limitations is what the Lakers was delusional about. He's clearly always going to be a non-shooting ass, turnover-prone ass, non-playing defense ass nigga. So for niggas to think any of that bad shit was going to switch when he came to the Lakers, was delusional. And 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 to to further that point, the the offensive numbers were atrocious. The shooting percentages, the turnovers, all that was atrocious. I think the wildest part to me is that a dude with the le- athleticism of Russell Westbrook couldn't stick a soul this season. And I think that's the more disrespectful part of his play. That's a fact. He just doesn't have the awareness. He just doesn't have the IQ or awareness. Yeah, I gotta I gotta go. Um. Just, just some matter. family matter, but if, so, if something, if if anybody like crazy comes up here trying to defend Russ, please let me know. But I still wholeheartedly believe that Westbrook was like his, like slowly starting to become the problem. But yeah, um, just let me know, and I'll. Hey, I'll be back hey Lo, before you go, I got I got a question. Yeah, and I've and I've asked these people. I feel like this season showed how justified KD was leave was was for leaving the Golden State. No, he still shouldn't have went to go to state. Not not go to state, but leaving OKC, sure. But in I some regards, I mean, the only reason why is because the only reason why I don't 
put that much bail to KD because it's not like he performed to his greatest either. So it's it's kind of like tough for both of them. But um, yeah, he did he did he did choke in those Western Conference finals. Yeah, so, yeah. Hey, yo, um, I'm gonna holler at y'all. I appreciate appreciate yeah, for sure. you saying my opinion and shit. Hey, Dom, I fuck with you for packing all these Westbrook fans up today. Oh, nigga, I appreciate it, bro. I've been doing this shit all year, and I continue to do it. <laughs> bro, 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 Domo, they've been arguing me all year. We're losing every game, still arguing. Listen, I just need people to understand, and yes, like, I I really – I'm surprised Nick Star was lying early when I said I'm doing this until 10 o'clock. Like, I, I really am. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm dead-ass doing this until 10 o'clock when I, I feel like I'll be tired by then. I probably won't because I've been waiting to get this off for a minute. I held back. I was reserved off spaces, really, hosting a lot of Westbrook slander spaces, as I was calling them. I, look, bro, it's just baffling to me how many people are still going to all these links to throw excuses, to try to deflect blame, and to bring up all this other shit that honestly really doesn't matter. Also, Domo, to, to the point of people trying to say, like, oh, they don't believe the report. I think what makes me believe that report even more is when Westbrook went in that conference, that uh, that that post game conference, and said, "I don't know what my role is." I, I for some reason that 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 exact day stands out to me with that report because in his mind, I believe he thinks he's his point guard. He's supposed to run the show, but nigga, you got LeBron and AD, two players that are better than you on that team. How That's facts. You know his role though. His role was the second. Ball handler, what the fuck is he talking about? He doesn't because of role. who he thinks he is. That's why he don't get. Yes, his role. that's why he doesn't believe in his role because he thinks he's supposed to. The offense supposed to run through him. There's no way he believes that, man. bro. There's a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent what he believes. That's a hundred percent delusional as fuck, man. Yeah, yeah, but it's, 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 it's not. not to to the anyway, if he really the, believed he was going to be the primary ball handler with LeBron James on the team, that's just crazy. I, I think, you know what I think happened? I think he was like, oh, LeBron's aging. I'll be able to be that ball handler. Because LeBron has made it very public that he doesn't want to have the ball in his hands at all times. He wants to conserve his energy, this, that, and the third. And I think that's what he thought his role was going to be, is the main ball handler. LeBron will play off of him. But when you have LeBron fucking James, that's not possible, bro. Dog, but he – y'all do y'all remember early in the season? In the previous season, this nigga had like nine turnovers in one game. Why the fuck would he have primary ball handling, dude? No, and that's – and that, Bro, hey, remember in the preseason, no Lakers fans was like, oh, it's just a preseason, and they didn't win a fucking game? Yeah, bro, that's what I knew this shit was bad. Cause I'm like, bro, these niggas ain't got no chemistry, bro. Like, No, I knew it was bad when them niggas lost to a – Kawhi list Clippers by like – what was like 15 or 20 in a preseason? I was like, how did how niggas getting blown out in the preseason? I know it was bad when we blew a fucking 26 points OKC and then a 19 point lead to OKC back to back games. Yeah, that was, y'all that niggas, was wild. Y'all that, niggas that, that is wild. No, 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 no. Let me stop y'all right there. Y'all niggas is wilding. All right, because y'all realized way too late that it was over. I realized it was over when I got the notification when I was at work, working in, working in the concrete field doing construction that Westbrook is traded to the fucking Lakers for KCP Coos and whatever else we do. That's when I knew it was over. I knew it was over then. I threw a sledgehammer at a wall. I threw a fit. I, I pouted at work because I knew my season this year was a wash. And I wasn't lying. That was my gut feeling. Yo, kids, always trust your gut. I was told that as a youth. And you know what's crazy? I refused to believe. I was like, no, nah, you know what? Sometimes second gets me so thinking on it. No, nigga, trust your gut. Because my gut told me Westbrook is a loser. Melo's a loser. So we're going to lose. And I was like, nah, it can't be that simple. And now look at us. Cancun. Not in the plan. Fucking sad. So, yeah, bro. Y'all was right. Shit shit was over a long time ago. I'm just ashamed of y'all for really taking that long. It took y'all after preseason. It took y'all in the season to realize it was over? For real, for real? Like, really realize it was over? It took y'all that long? That's that's shameful. Hey, Damo. I, I, knew, that, I knew y'all wasn't going to win anything, but I ain't going to lie. I ain't think it was finna be this bad. I thought niggas at least make the eighth seed, bro. I'm gonna keep it a bit. Oh, I, I, thought niggas, I thought niggas at least make the playoffs. I was like, that's what I'm saying. I thought eight. niggas at least make the playoffs, let alone a play. Hey, what you head. mean by what you what you mean by what you uh, think it was over with? Like no championship or yeah, when championship aspirations. Oh hit yeah, the, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would agree on that. I had to talk myself into the shit. I'm like Westbrook. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> why would you have Westbrook? I had to lie to myself. I had to lie to myself repeatedly. Like I stay. I I was in bed just looking up at the ceiling. Took my Laker poster off the wall in the dark, just thinking like all of the possibilities for us to work. Thinking like, you know what? God would not do this to me. 
You know, I spent a lot. I spent a lot of my teen years watching my team tank. There's no way he's gonna do my twenties like this. He's not gonna give me one ring in a bubble, a bubble ring with Mickey Mouse on it. There's no way that's the only ring we're getting out of LeBron. My favorite player coming to my favorite team. There's no way that's how God's gonna do me. And you know what? It is what it hey, is, bro. Yo. Hey, Domo, though, it's crazy to me though about how Lakers fans have, you know, for the past, besides that one ring, it's been it's been pretty bad for for Lakers fans. And it's crazy how much pride these Lakers fans have in thinking that everything goes through L.A., this, that, and the third, or that the Suns were bullshit last year. This, that, and the, like, bro, I thought these, like, keep it a bit, I've made so many excuses for Westbrook because I'm not going to lie, bro. Growing up, Westbrook was one of my favorite players. Watching him on OKC, he was one of my favorite players. I loved the way I loved his energy. I loved his hustle. And then it's crazy to see how bad these niggas really are, bro. That shit is insane. It still shouldn't have been this bad, though. Bro. Not this bro, bad. Look at the cap space, bro. This shit was destined from the start, bro. It was always going to be this bad, bro. You out in uh, habitual losers, multiple of them. Plus, Hell this yeah. nigga tank. Plus, no defense, most too. Most of the cap space. Yeah, no defense, no defensive effort. Even and these niggas general. have zero IQ. Like, it's no, crazy. Yeah, no continuity. They have zero IQ. Thing, nigga, no, because like, y'all, y'all remember... Destined. Y'all remember earlier in the season when niggas was picking on Melo? You know what's crazy about that to me, too? Melo went on that little podcast talking about some, Ron called me. I know it's go time this year. Nigga, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Think about it. Think about it, though. We literally have three niggas on the team that has good IQ. LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Austin Reed. Literally. And AD can't even play with y'all for more than 25 games, so this nigga really like two and a half. As good as Monk was this year, this nigga has low IQ. Y'all remember that game he just in New Orleans? We had like three, three fucking transition turnovers, just throwing the ball away like Westbrook. Hey, y'all mind if I say something in regards to the whole Westbrook thingy? Yeah, go ahead. All right, don't uh, be supporting this nigga though. Uh, no, no, no. What I'm gonna say is, I am a Russ fan, but I'm not delusional. I'm not gonna sit here and act like he hasn't had a shitty season compared to what his standards are. Uh, what I think is a lot of people are gassing it, trying to give him a hundred percent of the blame when the team itself has been bad defensively, and he has added to that as well. He's been shit defensively as well. But it's kind of hard to be good in transition where your team can't get stops and run in transition. Can- and that's also stacked on top of the fact that it's an old-ass roster full of niggas that's not going to run, like, four quarters, if that makes sense. Wait, like, can the I roster you- is Russ's fault too, though, fam. Wait, hold on, hold well, on. Yeah, no, I- no, 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 look. I- I'm not saying it's not Russ's fault. I'm not saying he doesn't o- own any of the fault. I'm saying uh, people are gassing it when they say shit like, nah, they're not oh, if we got it. Buddy Hill, we'll be way better off. Nah, you might be better, but adding Buddy Hill or getting Jeremy Grant instead or even getting fucking DeMar DeRozan is not going to change the fact that this team is bad defensively because they traded away all their assets. No, no, they would have been better than what they – they would be better than what they are now, but they would still not be a championship team is what I'm saying. I think they could, man. I think I honestly think Westbrook fucked up the whole morale of the team once they realized how bad he was and they knew they wasn't going to win. So you mean – wait, wait, wait. So, so you're saying that you believe that if you guys would have gotten Buddy Hill instead of Westbrook, y'all got – you would be in the running for a championship right now. Yeah, I believe that so because they wouldn't have – the trade package wouldn't have been the trade package it was if you guys were getting Buddy Hill. It wouldn't have okay. been okay. No, 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 no. But look, no, no, no. Let's, let's just say we remove Westbrook and add Buddy Hill in his place. You 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 believe that team is a championship but team? The, but don't work, bro. LeBron he crippled the games, contract. That's a big the, if, though. If AD he, and LeBron he, play 65 games, with that roster, if we keep Caruso, we keep KCP, we definitely could have been a, a top four. Top but that's four changing the narrative, then. The, the issue is just that y'all traded away y'all. No, but that's look, 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 Adrian, and if, Adrian. If y'all want to blame the, Westbrook for that, then that's fine. Adrian, Adrian, that's part yeah. of the blame is because how much they traded – how they traded multiple defensive players, multiple players that are young and play defense and run with niggas. That that's the issue. It's not just it, like I get what you're saying that it's not Russell Westbrook's fault that that the team completely sucked, but a part of the team sucking is all the pieces they gave up to get Russell Westbrook. Well, well, he, he's and, the and root what I'm problem. saying is, if he was traded for that, how do you place that blame on him if that's what the Lakers gave up? Oh no no no! Because he got I, there and played awful. I get played, that, but but no no no. He played look, look Adrian. He didn't play bad. Like he no, didn't he play like bad. Shit. Don't say he, he played play like bad. he played dog shit. shit. He played horrible. But you're not going to add Westbrook and expect him to replace fucking the defensive people that y'all traded away. No, if anything, think, you would think, expect him to to fill the offensive void. But 
he played. Yeah, I on think I think that's what they were looking well. for is to him to fill the offensive void so they can go against the Nets big three or whatever. But my point. But yeah, he deserves blame for the season. I I agree with that completely. But I, I feel like it's gassing it where niggas was saying like, oh, he like it's not only it's not and only. LeBron because LeBron signed off this trade. That, I don't care what y'all say. This shit do not go off if LeBron don't okay it. I get but that, that, but yeah, at but the same to me time, that makes Linka too though. Like, do you like, really like, think? Wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. Because I hate I, I hate this argument about niggas. So you honestly believe? LeBron, a hundred percent. Like LeBron was like, "Yo, we want Russ go." You think LeBron did that? You think that's how it went? Like LeBron orchestrated this whole team, or are you just saying the Russ deal? Hey, bro, I, I hate to um, interject, I guess, um, or not, because I know y'all was having a great conversation or whatnot. But um, the best game the Lakers played in the past, like two years, was the playing game against Golden State. Uh, every other game has been a wash since then. And I would like to say that this was a downhill spiral since the end of last season. Um, they should have traded for Kyle Lowry, if anything, because they was giving up THC. But no, they were too busy uh, t- sucking THC's dick to not give this nigga away. I said that last year, but um, Domo, you looked at me like I was crazy. Uh, you was like, nah, not THC. You can't trade him away. Nah, he should have. He should have been gone. He should have been gone. It last was too year. much. It was the same problem that. In the Russ deal, we gave up too much. We, we gave up too much defense, and look how this roster is constructed. That's my thing. If I would have known that Nichols was going to go get Russ and then sign Malik Monk and then get Austin Reeves as an undrafted free as an undrafted rookie and do all this extra shit, then yes, get rid of the team, bring Kyle Lowry. But I didn't know Russ was on the horizon. I didn't know that's what the fuck they had in plan. I would have out of dead ass did that trade ten times over if I would have known the niggas was planning to go get Russell Westbrook. I was saying don't just trade for Kyle Lowry. Giving up KCP and THT, we need defense. What was yeah, his uh, yeah. contract going before? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know what the who Kyle. Uh, um, yeah, what was his contract? Kyle, before? he's good. he's making like what tw- mid high twenties, maybe thirty. That's still less than forty because what Russell that is less than 90, 40. ninety over two years. Listen. That is less than 40, and again, I give you that. But it wasn't like the trade was presented as, okay, we're either getting Lowry or Westbrook. Then it would have been obviously Lowry. It was just, oh, the t- uh, the Raptors are trying to get um THT, oh, a trade Lowry away for THT and fucking KCP. And at that time, which is the, at the very beginning of the offseason, I want to say, I was like, no, don't give up THT in that deal too. You can't give – and I didn't think we are going to mismanage this roster to what we – Unutil- well, we misutilized THT as well. THT is a 6'4 shooting guard. We had him playing small forward guard and 6'8 niggas. Like, I didn't think that would be THT's role this season. So, yes, I was, in hindsight, I was 100% wrong. I have no problem saying that. But going into the season, I'm just trying to put you in my mindset. I did not think, based off of what we already seen, the role THT had before, we would go ahead and flip the script and misutilize him like hell, misutilize this roster, and bring in two losers named West Brick and fucking Mello. I didn't think that was going to happen, dog. I really didn't. Hey, yo, Damo, I just want to ask you this question. What's up? You think that You think that Westbrook, if we didn't – Westbrook stunned THC's growth this year? Who cares about the growth of THC? I'm not going to say – okay, I care about what the growth mean? of THC. I, no, 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 Kobe, I got you. I got you. You asked the real THC fan. No, 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 Kobe, Kobe. Kobe, you asked the real THT fan. I care about his growth. It wasn't just Westbrook that stunned it, but yes, Westbrook did have I'm a part not, of stunning his group. Yes. I, when I say that, I'm not even slandering Taylor, bro. You you can be a you can love that boy. You can still think he got all star potential. He shouldn't be super on this mid, team, bro. You should yeah. you shouldn't be on this team because we knew from the jump it's going to take him at best some time to be a player that complements LeBron and AD. He just wasn't a fit for the squad, like bro. Bro, we did mis- misutilize him because. There was really no way to utilize him, bro. Like he just he shouldn't have been here. That that was my that's all I'm saying, though. I ain't saying like that's all I'm saying. I I don't think I don't think Taylor's he can't be a bust. He was he wasn't even drafting that. But I I'm not saying bro's trash or nothing, like how a lot of people on Twitter are, uh Dom and everybody else that likes Taylor, because I know he he's like the Lakers fucking love child. But I don't know why. I, I I just he just shouldn't be here. He's in a bad situation where it would be unrealistic to to assume that Taylor would be in championship level form come year two or year three, whatever it is of his. No, young because career. that nigga scored like thirty it points back in back versus the Clippers in the preseason. Then everybody thought that nigga was gonna be like 
nice as fuck. I just didn't anticipate them to side. misutilize him. And I didn't expect them to fuck this roster up so bad. Sage, I do agree. On this Laker roster, he has no place on it. He really doesn't. With this yeah. Laker team, 100% agree with that. But going into this season, I definitely don't see that sentiment at all. 2021, you could, you, we could debate back and forth. Like, hey, can we? Sorry, done. But yeah, 2022. Yeah. Can we? Can we hey, okay. real quick, real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let Afro go because we were supposed to go to Afro, and then everybody just start going crazy. Yeah, fast, uh, fast. it's still niggas. Their hands up, still trying to get their points off. So we're gonna go Afro, uh, Yuki, and then Tez. All right, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, nah, all I want to say is I I just want to understand what happened with this meeting with Russ and LeBron and AD. What the fuck were they talking about? Because when I read that article, it's just it just adds just a nail to the coffin. I'm like, what do you mean, like? You disrespecting your coach like that? Like, come on, nigga. You're supposed to be a vet one. You got other niggas looking up to you, too. You a, you already you top 75 type player. Like, nigga, you doing that? That's so immature, my nigga. Like, come on, man.